Welcome everyone to our live stream here. Game analysis. Who really hot here? How'd you know HTFP? It's back. The heat is back here in Budapest. We're up to low 90s. I guess something around 92 Fahrenheit. I don't know. In that range. 90, 92. Pretty hot. Mr. Coffee's in the house. It isn't as bad as it was two weeks ago, but it's a big heat wave in southern Europe, France, Portugal, Spain, a lot of fires making its way here. I think tomorrow is going to be a little better. Tomorrow and Saturday are going to be a little better. Um, but yeah, it's really unpleasant. I got a wine cooler, homemade wine cooler here. Um, all right. Master Sumahair, I gotta add your game, I think. Zumahair. Yeah, I have to use, like, a beer, a, a cold beer to cool down my computer. It was the only cold thing in the fridge I could put next to the computer. Uh, did I put it in already? I don't remember, but if I did, I will do it again and then delete it. Beer cooled CPU. It just felt really hot to me, so I just stick a beer back there and um, it helps it chill out a little. Remember, like we have larger beer cans here. They're like kind of like 16 ounces. I don't know exactly how many ounces. Um, all right, open. I can't add it to the study, right? Right? We can. We probably already did. Yeah, you better tell me correct my study title, which was Saturday Analysis Stream. Thanks for fixing that. What's up, Biatches? Hmm. When Biatch be became a big thing. I always remember having this, there was this chess author named Vyacheslav Asnos. So I would, we made a, an account on another chess site called Vyacheslav. It never got banned, you know, it's literally, and then, you know, the, in the Cyrillic, the B looks like a V anyway, so Vyacheslav makes sense. Vyacheslav. <laughs> that was one of my accounts. Um, never got flagged, you know, for bad language or anything. Unlike snack on my sack, which didn't last that long. That lasted a while, but I think it was reported. <clears throat> Shortly after beating Arena Crush in a Blitz game. Okay, we've got Summon on Sound Morales game submitted by Morales. Resonance Spectator, Excel Poker submitted by Resonance Spectator. O'Kelly vs. Gollumbeck submitted by Move11. Acerbeat submission, Sumhair submission. As I said, guys, I can't read my own writing. It, it might have been Yabades. If I had to bet on it, I don't know what I wrote down for the list, but I'm sure that I forgot somebody. I'm almost certain that I forgot somebody for today's stream, for the analysis stream. Actually, Hey It's Miro said he was going to send me something. Maybe he forgot and went to sleep. See if he sent me anything. 
otherwise known as Hey, it's Mira. Mr. Arsenal has been MIA. I don't think Arsenal ever sent me a game. He just, like, threatened to send me one. Mm. Byacheslav Asnos. The Red Tea for the Tournament Player. That was a favorite book of mine. Alright guys, without further ado, you know, it's funny, maybe Repunge would have submitted a game? Let's check. I know that I'm forgetting somebody. Repunch is like Sumahair. He always forgets. Not always forgets, but I mean, it never shows up or something. Maybe he's shadow banned? He's joined only Ars fans. Hmm. No. Nothing. Nothing for Repunch. Yeah, he's probably not a subscriber either. Alright, whatever. So, time to start. I've got just five games. Guys, only one gift sub. I'm not gonna... say anything, but we're very sad here. Only one gift sub this week. Who things will pick up for the simul stream on Sunday. Um, how's my title? Are we good? Is it Lee Chess? Yeah. Alright. Yeah, he's probably not a sub, Mr. Coffee. I'm not sure. I haven't checked the sub list in a while. This is not Mr. Coffee's private fundraiser, guys. Help send me to the World Senior in November. I'm also playing a tournament in August, which is coming up quick. So I am tournament in August will be my warm up for the November World Senior Championship. Maybe we'll get some rounds in the Hungarian Team Championship. I guess so. That'll be tough. We're gonna play on the first division in the Hungarian Team Championship, and I'm gonna play. They're talking about board three. Even board three is guaranteed grandmasters in Hungarian first division. Every single round, almost. HTFP, welcome. 100 bits from HTFP. Did you submit a game for this week? Let me know. In depth, ti in depth title. Okay, let's get started. Um, not as brain foggy as usual, but it's very hot here. 10 traps in London system. These are the most popular studies. Dude, whatever. My studies. Alright. They probably watch Eric Rosen's streams and then extract, like, traps and make little studies out of them. Oh, dude. This is not our first game. Sumer, you didn't submit the, the Nimzo. Alright. This is someone on sound. Actually, this is Morales, so we'll look at it from Morales' side. God, Arsenal's here. We were just worried about you. How's the lawn care going? Remember not to use Monsanto. You know, weed roundup for yard care. So. Richard, welcome. The ambulance is on the way if you need some help. Phone mass went down. Wow, do you get fiber speed installed? Change contract. Good to know you're back up to speed. Our first game is submission from Rallis. He played against another subscriber, Summon on Sound. Fast game. What is this? Two plus one. Oh, this is serious classical chess here. Two plus one. Morales is faster than someone on sound, so the time alone, even if they're like equally matched, has got to be to Morales' advantage. 
I do find playing against someone that sounds opening repertoire to be pretty tough. I've been playing some Petros. Knight takes e5. So, alright. You know, assuming that we're not Jababa, we're gonna play d6. Oh! Someone on sound played the co crane. Okay, it's been a while. Um. Yeah, he played this against me. That was a couple years ago now, you know, probably. I got Astrobate in the opening explorer. <laughs> Alright, let's let's close that out. Sparkle horse. Thank you, HTFP, for a small donation of hundred bits. Every little bits counts. We're gonna change this back to me. And all set. Sparkle horse as white. I played knight f7 once. Oh, I remember this. Actually against Morales, so small wonder. You were what? Knight takes f7 is actually surprisingly playable. Yes, knight takes e4 is a move. Who was that guy that was playing it against us? Was it Husky? Was it... No, not Husky. Husky? One of the viewers who was here regularly was playing this. Mama Jaro of Gambit. Oh, Xerox. Sorry, not Husky. It was Xerox. Getting my words with a double... Double letter. Mixed up. Um, Husky and Xerox. Yeah, that's playable, but the key is to this line, queen e2, queen e7, queen e4, d6, d4, pawn takes, you have to take the pawn, and then on knight c6, um, bishop b5, no. Yeah, this is something I didn't know. I guess the old book said bishop b5. But I think this is stronger. You give the pawn back. This is. I know Hikaru played it. It's definitely the easiest to play. Knight c3. Anyway, alright. We're looking at the Cochrane Gambit though. Knight takes f7. Yeah, not a lot of choices here. There is a funny line, though. Mm. So there's two main possibilities. Knight c3 or d4. I guess, you know, the drawback with knight c3 would be that you would give black the time to play c5. Um, but there is a funny line, d4, and now, yeah, like, surprisingly, there was, like, one grandmaster who did this. Reinderman Van, Van der Steren in 1999, he actually took the pawn. I don't know what a guy who was like formerly close to 2600, 2600 was thinking. Queen h5 check, g6, queen d5 check. Black is just like down a pawn. That's pretty weird. Um. But now, like, the main line is c5. That was what I went over when I did a lecture on this. This is, like, the classical recommendation. My games... With black... After c5. Six games with bishop c4 check. And two with knight c3. But Morales goes a different way, so g6.
tried Pilsner Urkel, by the way. Got the final can in front of me. You never had Pilsner Urkel. That's... I find the, the taste to be, you know, like, har harsher, a little more... It has a stronger aftertaste. Um, Pilsner Urkel is more bitter, almost. Um, I find the Star from it a little bit easier to drink. So, G6, I'm not familiar with this. Did I... Did I ever have this with white? Yeah, the game with Morales, okay. So against Morales, I played knight c3. I think I built up a good position and lost. He plays king g7. So it looks like you're expecting like bishop g7, but the king actually slides over to g7. We had an interesting game here. I mean, it looks to me like I had compensation for the sacrifice piece. Later, I guess. I guess I went too far. <clears throat> but I don't know. I wouldn't feel... I wouldn't feel, like, real safe here for black. What's the engine say? Uh-huh. The engine, depth 14, doesn't know who's better. My CPU is fried by heat and it's weak anyway. So I don't know. I don't trust completely this evaluation. But I don't know, you know, Morales got in trouble there. Let's look at the theory. So let's see master database. Let's go back. G6 master database. Who has G6 been played by? Bernatsky and Anakayev. Toth Bela, of course, the author of a book on the Petrov that was stolen. Um, not, not really like a lot of players, like strong players have, have played this move. The fact that Toth Bela played it, you know, is a good sign. The other players, other than Bernatsky, I don't know. Is that like an engine move? It's the engine move. But at what depth? Yeah, engine like C5. Funny that Bishop B6 is a move. I don't know, man. I, I don't know if you can trust the computer here. Amazingly, like, it was even looking at king g8. So g6, and now bishop c4 check. I didn't play this because I guess I knew, like, the king is heading for g7. Yeah, I don't know the exact details, but I was, um... He's dead now. There was a Hungarian grandmaster, um... Yeah, it's escaping me. Who stole Toth Bela's analysis. They stole all his analysis and then published this Petrov book for Batsford, like, under their own names. <clears throat> Literally, that's what happened. Chess is a tough, it's a tough world. Yeah, who was that? It was an older Hungarian Grandmaster. And there was another guy involved. So there was like this Hungarian GM, they used his name and then another master, and they published it, the two of them. Toth Bela was like living in Italy, and they got his analysis somehow. I mean, like, it's hard to copyright chess analysis. Like, how could he prove that they stole all of his analysis? Um, back in those days especially. Bishop c4 check, king g7. This is not the game, wow. So you don't play king g7, you did that against me. 
But instead now, d5. But what I've got to ask is, you're just going to do king g7 later. Is that the point? This move looks forced, and now bishop d6. <coughs> so, he's still going to put his king on g7. Castles, king g7. Now, if I were white, you want to reinforce this and, and like send this armada forward. I mean, what you really want to do is get that rolling, the big, the big, whatever it is, amoeba. Yeah, now the next move, I mean, I've played someone on sound a lot. I just know like this never works against him. This move like this move just doesn't seem right. I mean black has all his pieces on the back row. And he's up a piece. And the name of the game, I mean, feels like consolidation. Yeah, something like A six. Maybe knight on B D seven. To play there, although that's like kind of a crappy square. I mean, what's the future for this knight? Yeah, I mean, a6 is going to be mapped by a4, 100%. So I guess, Lars, we have to take it a little further. I mean, if you play a6, 100% a4, now what do we do? You know, we didn't really... I mean, just because we blockaded d5 doesn't mean we can't play c6 at some point. But it would, it would let a lot of horses out of the barn there. First time chat... I don't know. All I know is it's kind of tough to get these pieces out, especially the knight. At first glance, it's like 97, 96, but all we do is put our knight on the bad square and then get like rolled by c4, c5 later on. It feels like we're just setting ourselves up for that. But Morales goes here. That's direct. I wouldn't believe in it if it was my game, but it's a 2 plus 1 game. So you can do anything. Now wait as the, the eternal question. You know you're going to get like knight takes h2 if you do g3, but I think the move has to be seriously considered. What's up, pay, poker badly? Poker goodly. Um, yeah, I mean, you're just going for an A H2. And it's like white as a draw, best case scenario, probably. King takes is a nightmare. Grovel for draw, best case scenario. That would be funny. So h3. I was actually expecting queen h4. But maybe it just doesn't work. It's a lot like some martial lines. But, you know, this is interesting. Queen h4. I'm afraid, like, this might be a problem. We're hitting the bishop, waits up a piece, and it guards f2. We might be out of luck there. So Morales literally on the fishing expedition. Now my my assumption here is that with white we can't take the knight. But knight e4 remains an idea. I mean, to eliminate this bishop on d6 seems like a major thing. Right, that's what he did. Bishop h2, king h1, knight e3. After knight e4. I mean, like, 
keep in mind black sound a piece so all we're doing is like yeah I don't see it oh my god you want to take on h3 all kinds of craziness right here you want to do this well no you I mean I, we're not talking about a different position are we where blacks played h5 or something are you talking about some position where black has played h5 I could see something like that working if our rook is down you know in the in the equation yeah so anyways this is a two minute game maybe white has to consider knight g3 huh but I mean in all honesty like the, uh, the, the stupid ambulances are driving me crazy Hungary has like the loudest ambulances of any country in the world I don't know why but I mean in all seriousness we have to take this black takes to the queen threatening made in one and then like I need to see a refutation for f4 not, not necessarily g3 I mean I guess that could get a little weird even that might work but just let's say let's keep it simple with like f4 Yeah, I mean, it's white who sacrificed the piece, so... Mm. Looks pretty convincing. I don't think a black has enough compensation. I mean, white has enough compensation. Yeah, I mean, this looks pretty good, dude. I play poker badly, dude. I get, I get, um, I've been getting, like, alumni requests, donation requests from Boston University for the last, like, 25 years. It's pretty, yeah, my, my college fraternity, too. It's pretty gross. But a lot of people just have, who are wealthy, have no problem with this, giving up money. Um, if you're wealthy, okay, whatever. I guess just hand them some money. Alright, I, I tried to decline. We're gonna try one more time to decline this challenge, and then I'm gonna ban them. Block them, or whatever. I'm trying to concentrate. I like how Morales took the initiative. Yeah, I mean, white's down a piece, so... Can we... Can we just double check this, please? You might have queen h4, huh? Oh, man. Yeah, that's that's a nasty surprise. Like, if you're counting on this, this is probably bad, too. But I was thinking, like, this might even be stronger. That might even be stronger than... Uh, than the other move. Like, taking is definitely out of the question. Maybe g3? I, I was... I was assuming there... Anyway, I don't know. Someone in town maybe played a good move, but but I, I can't believe White's got enough here. He's down a piece. Yeah, I think Morales does a sensible thing. Like, he just brings his knight back. I mean, I can't fault him for this. This is a nice maneuver, though. Maybe White's plan is to play knight of three, but at the end of the day, he's still down a piece. If he wasn't down a piece, he'd be in good shape. 
Remember, he's just down a piece. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. This is a two-minute game. But, I mean, White's problem is that he never got this, like, pawn amoeba, whatever you want to call it. You know, whatever, this pawn, especially. He needs to get that working. I'm afraid this is just, like, too, too direct. But maybe it's worth it. Lately, I have a really bad score in piece-up positions for, like, two pawns. Any, any time the opponent sac sacks a piece for two pawns, I, like, lose. Clearly, this is an option. This is like seemingly like more solid, but it looks like we have a huge detonation device here. With it, with the C six is going to blow white up. So, Black's play seems very convincing here. Easily defended. By the way, F six is very easy to defend. I can play Rook F eight. I still think like blowing up white center is this move deserves serious consideration. I mean bishop f6 is not really a problem. Famous last words. This is not a problem because of bishop e5. This is not a problem because of knight f5, and g4, and like white is in a very strange place. Bishop check. Maybe this works for white, but I kind of doubt it. I, I really think that white is in trouble here. It's only plus 1.9 for black. White is in the game, believe it or not. So, Morales doesn't do c6 right away. He plays knight f5. It stops queen d4. It's a good move. There is this e7. You almost beat your club star with two pawns against the knight. Yeah, I I don't like, you know, I don't feel comfortable losing the initiative. Never ever underestimate, you know, the opponent's threats. I'm usually a very strong defender. Bishop d3, but of course time pressure plays a role in, in online chess. We're playing like rapid. Here, White's ready to play c4 now. I mean, the lasting power of this pawn on e6 is pretty significant. Wow, bishop h2, but doesn't he just play king h1? Isn't that the refutation? The master of puppets. <laughs> He'll just play king h1. Yeah, so I don't know about rookie one. I guess you're not threatening anything though. This is not a threat. Wow. I mean, white has stuff like bishop takes a f5 and queen d4 maybe. But he has to be careful. He doesn't want to trade pieces. So he just plays c4. Black plays b6. White plays the silly move b3. Okay, this is time pressure now. We're playing blitz. How much compensation does white have here? This is a stupid move. Because of time pressure. I don't really like rookie one, to be honest. But maybe it's not bad. It leaves this pawn a little weak. He 
He can't play queen d2 because he gets he gets skewered by bishop e4. This weakens white's dark squares. B3 is just a move to move quickly. He didn't have any real plan with that. You're down with the connected, the CPP, the central pass pawn, but, but you're down a piece too. Don't forget. Down a piece. Nice blockade by Morales. And now he's going to like Fiancato his queen and bring the rook over. That's brutal. Master of Blockade. Yeah, I mean, black's better in the final position, I guess, but... I'm not saying it's, like, easy for black to consider how to win, you know, I don't know. Computer disagrees, wow. The engine likes white. <laughs> Another bad evaluation by me. Man, I always think like the piece is better. Oh shit, he has three pawns for the piece. All right. Nobody told me that white had three pawns for a piece. I stopped counting a long time ago. Yeah, when you play d5, I've done this too. I've actually done this on the black side of the Cochrane Gambit. When you play d5, you're like sacrificing a third pawn. So he's been down three pawns all along. Yeah, I guess I, I I'd say it's equal. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna agree with the engine. And the engine has its own evaluations. I, I say I say this is equal. If it's three pawns, it's equal. That's what um Who was talking about that? Their dad said Oh Curdo stepson. Curto Stepson said his dad said that three pawns for a piece is good. I think it's fair. Someone on sound just lost on time. I mean, I knew that's what would happen. Morales is fast. Bishop pair. I'm not sure about better king, to be honest. There's there's some arsenal bishop h2s out there. The f file. But there is this vortex. The vortex is impressive. I'm not going to say white is worse. <laughs> I think it's equal. Alright, good game. So our next game is Excel Poker will be excited. He's got a game in here. Against Resonance Spectator. What was wrong with Bishop D2, Bishop C3 for white? Now you ask me? Just going on to the next game. Um, yeah, I don't like trading the darks for bishop. He's just, um, he's about to lose on time. Okay, we, we didn't comment on this. No. No, no, I mean, clearly, like, white never should play bishop takes g5 or bishop takes e7 under any circumstances. That's just the move he played because he was going to lose on time. Of course, the bishop pair is an advantage, and yes, this is a worthy suggestion. A swarthy suggestion. Okay, the first, the first suggestion is, of course, bishop e5, rook e5, queen e5, bishop c3, queen somewhere, bishop takes h8, king takes h8. I'm not really changing my evaluation here unless we has something clear. I still think it's about equal. Why did you say Swarthmore? <laughs> my best friend went to Swarthmore. Also Fide Master David Gertler. A lot of times I regret not going to a small college. Um, okay, 
Okay, Queen G7. Swarthy. He's swarthy. The swarthy fellow. Arsenal is a swarthy fellow. Yeah, no, I agree, man. I guess white still has some sort of initiative, but I don't I don't like white better. I don't know. Personally. Frustrating to play. The slothy. Swarthy slothy. Swarthy sloth. Agnes Karajewski doing 200 bits. They're always here on weekdays. I mean, in the mornings. Um, HCFP earlier, 100 bits. Thanks for the follow from SPD. PDS. Public service announcement. In case of a nuclear attack, there was, everyone's freaked out because in New York City they had a nuclear attack public service announcement the other day. Can I submit a game I played earlier? Yes, sir. You got it. Well, at least, like, Tony Miles would probably submit a game he played in the future. Get all kinds of weird, weird stuff like that. I'm submitting a game I played in the future. I assume it was a game you played earlier. I think that's a safe, a safe assumption. Um, and hopefully not a game you're, like, playing right now live, because that would be, that would be cheating so funny theoretical wrinkles I have too many wrinkles smoking causes wrinkles my dad's best friend was a house painter he did a lot of outdoor painting and he smoked like unfiltered camels he was the most wrinkled person I ever saw a lifetime of unfiltered camels and, and house painting in the sun. But he lived to like 85 or something. You know? But he had some serious wrinkles going on. He was... That was crazy. The wrinkliest guy I knew. Um, Alright. Excel Poker vs. Resident Spectator. Yeah, you're absolutely welcome. Submit some new wrinkles. So... Luckily, it's not a win against Excel Poker. But let's see what happened here. The Resonance Expator. There was an article in the BBC today. I never knew that story about, about that guy who used to play in the open. I never knew the story. There was this, like kind of guy who couldn't play golf who like signed up for the open every year Arsenal probably knows about him g6 all right knight c3 bishop g7 speaking of golf because because the the open is starting right British open e4 d6 bishop b2 castles Bishop g5, Arsenal, the Arsenal attack. Arsenal, Averbach, Arsenal, they call him. No, this is Resonance Spectator. He's a colleague of Arsenal's in the stream. Alright, so Excel Poker playing black here, and the kid. Excel Poker played the modern defense. You like Kingside Fianchetto, huh? I don't understand laying on BD7. I'm trying to think what my friend Grandmaster John Fedorovich used to play. Maybe John played Knight BD7, I can't remember.
I always like to add like the general rule that any time white plays bishop g5, you know, it seems like in most cases you don't really want to play e5 anymore. <laughs> that seems to be like the common theme, but it's not true in all variations. I like to play for c5. I don't know much about this variation. I, I think I remember like Fedorovich and me like playing in a tournament and, and he had to play Kaidanov and Kaidanov used to play the Averbach. Right, no, e5 is bad, so you have to play knight on bd7 first, not to sack the exchange or whatever. Yeah, I think this was this is fed against Kaidanov. But there's some kind of variation with like queen e2, bishop d1, right? Aren't you, aren't you supposed to... Don't, doesn't that happen later on? We like transfer the bishop to d1. I've never played this line for either side. But it seems to me... It seems to me like this. 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 Something like this. And then the bishop can go like here. To answer Arsenal's question, yeah, h6 is a line. That's the line that I played. I told the story how I played Palatnik twice. He's an older, like, Soviet grandmaster who immigrated to the United States in the 90s. And I had this weird situation where I played him, and, and like, in the same tournament, I played him again because I dropped out and re-entered. So we had two games in the same tournament in the same variation with h6 we should be 3 c5 um that's what i've played for the most part with black but i think c5 directly is also a good line but there's also knight a6 this can transpose to other lines where the knight goes over here So now I'm out of my depth, but I do think that e5 is the main line. Again, based on Fed playing it. I'm completely out of my depth now. c6 looks like a move. Um, I mean, is the idea with c6... For black, maybe Excel Poker, you can tell me is the idea with C6 that like when you play E5 and he pushes, you're gonna trade. I mean, from black's perspective, is there an idea that you want to discourage him from castling queenside or something? Bishop F3. It's a little awkward. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, Arsenal, this this isn't an awkward, an awkward looking move, but it has been played. Okay, it gives you the option to play a six and b five. You know, that's another suggestion I would make, though. Um. I mean, I've seen similar ideas in the in the in Makaganov. Can you do like a six or c six directly? You could play c six directly or a six directly instead of knight on bd seven. What if you try to do the a six c six touchy feely? this sort of touchy-feely variation with like b5 yeah I, I don't know you can play c6 first I'm still gonna do this then we do a6 but the point is to play a setup based on b5 anyway there's there's various options I suppose 
I have to check. Soltis did did a good book on his chess games, and all I know is like people from my region, really. So I I lived in the East Coast, and and so you know I'm exposed to people like John Fedorovich, Soltis, Kings Indian players from New York City. You know who who am I gonna reference? Um. You reckon what? You gotta go. Take care. Bye bye. Anyway, it's knight on bd7, queen d2, c6, knight f3. But I'm just saying, like, Excel Poker doesn't really explain it, but I'm, I guess what I'm asking is, like, is there a concrete reason why you're playing c6 before e5? He's, he's flirting with both plans, but he ends up doing e5 anyway, the next move. Oh, so this is Paterson and Kasparov. That's quoted in some books. I, I clearly remember this game. I suspect it was... Played in World Cup Reykjavik, 1988. Maybe it wasn't in Reykjavik. I, I can't remember, but there was a series of big tournaments, which was called the the World Cup, different from the the modern like FIDE World Cup. But in 1988, I remember this game being quoted in a mess of books. So it's interesting, white doesn't have to release the tension here. Um, can just keep the tension. He does play d5. Whew. My friend Anna lost against uh, Carissa. That's gross. She's in Kharkov now. I hope she's okay. Former Women's World Champion. I haven't seen anything on Facebook from her in a while. But as far as I know, she's still... Still singing in Kharkov. And it's getting pretty bad there. That's pretty bad to lose to Chrissy Yip, too. Alright. Um, embarrassing. Castles... Was played most games and there's rook d1 there's kaidanov kaidanov piquet 1993 you know fed definitely knew that he was well prepared i forget what happened maybe it was a draw i don't think that john lost i have a terrible score against kaidanov i lost to him in Averbach once it was one of those h6 lines that I was talking about at Arsenal. What is engine evaluation for H4? Dude, you're going to have to make a donation for that. I will not analyze H4 with the knight on F3 and, and tension in the center. This is not the dragon. You're going to have to make an extra donation, even if you are a moderator. Or you can, like, submit H4 for your game analysis. We're not analyzing H4. White played D5. And then... Excel Poker did, like, a... He did a, a Soltis. Soltis has some bad... He had some one bad game I didn't like where he did this. Confessions of a Grandmaster... You should read that Excel poker if you like playing the King's Indian. Although a lot of it's like kind of out of date theoretically. He still has a lot of interesting ideas. Soltis was a great King's Indian player. Um, although not, not like a strong Grandmaster, he was excellent in, in King's Indian. And modern too. If you like to play the modern, um, best known for being the columnist for, for the New York Times for years. 
he works for New York Times. Um, he's like a regular. Well, he was. Maybe he's retired now. He's a he's a journalist. Not a professional chess player. So, d5. I would think you like take, man. Hey, man. Cabrillo took. He's a grandmaster. He was Ivan Isevich's trainer. I remember. I went to the Belgrade. I was in Belgrade at the the Belgrade like Chess Federation or the Serbian Chess Federation and Cabrillo was analyzing with with a young guy called Ivan Ivanisevic when I was there um, I know these guys but uh, you know this seems like the normal move but wait is slightly better you could drift into a wow that's weird. This guy, I think I know him. Um, Radovanovich. I think we played a couple times. But, uh... This, this seems weird to take with the E-pawn. I don't think that's that's right. You know, that, that looks a little bit odd. Normally, white will recapture with the C-pawn. In this type of structure. I mean, it does happen, but I, I, I just don't quite trust this. I've been there, yeah. Only time I met Cabrillo. Weird. I, I feel like I was there. I don't remember who I was with. Someone that knew him, and it's all like vague now. The only time I was in Serbia. C takes D5, C takes D5. All right. You could play knight c5, like, that's what Larry Jr. played. Alright, anyway. So it looks like white should keep the tension. This is stronger. I was just saying to acerbate. Bottom line, like, why release the tension when you can keep the tension? Never get out of the boat. Although to be fair, like in most cases you do, you know, you do normally need to release the tension a lot of times in the King's Indian. Here, it's not mandatory. You are setting yourself up for tactics. Once I got hit by a really bad, like, knight takes e4 in a sort of similar... In this match I had with the master once. Anyways, so he plays c5. It seems like white just has a space advantage. But the pieces are kind of weird. I'm just taking a long time in this game because I like the king's Indian positions. White castles now. You could tur It's turned into a Petrosian system now. I would seriously think about like just changing the changing the, the complete, you know, setup. This knight needs a place to go. Arsenal, you still want to play h4? Give me the club. Alright. You still want to play h4? That's Black's strong point. I was going to suggest queen c2. And we're playing the Petrosian system. The knight comes back here. But you can also, you know, the fact that White doesn't castle is beneficial. He doesn't have to castle. He can stay in the center. White plays like knight d2. And we can actually do your h4 with the support of the bishop on, on e2. We can play knight d2, knight f1, knight g3, something like that. The problem is, like, with queen e3, your queen is uh, exposed to attack. 
Let's see what the computer says. It's just castles, probably. Shit. It likes the it liked the arsenal move at first. But then it like modified itself. It's like no 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 okay. It said no no I changed my mind I would have played H three. H three is okay. It's another form of Petrosian system style thing. I still think our queen is on the wrong square though. I guess it's not that bad though. I mean he doesn't have knight c five and he can't hit e four a second time. So it's not really a problem. If it, it's a check Benoni, right? It's basically transformed into a check Benoni. So like bishop d3, queen e2, castle's queen side. White's better, but it's hard to play. Castle and king side, it's fine, but not my cup of tea necessarily. A6. Yeah. So this one Czech guy had this position with white and played knight e1. He's basically playing it like a, a classical king's Indian now. But c5 blockades the queen side to some degree. Automatic move is a4, but the problem is arsenal. Like, if you do a4, you know, it's hard to get in a break. It's also, it's not the Benko, you know. You, you can't just do the Benko and the check Benoni. Like, b5 loses a pawn. He's not threatening to play b5 yet. So it doesn't have to be b... It doesn't have to be a4 insta. In fact, we can play, like, rook b1 with the threat of b4, you know, theoretically. But again, our pieces are all, like, on the wrong squares. We need to have queen c2, knight d2, the knight revolving over here, maybe to b3 if we want to play it like that. I don't want to just play, like, rook b1, b4, and have the guy, you know, with a great outpost with his knight on c5. I've got to be able to get, get that knight off of c5. I mean, say, like, rook b1, what does black play? I don't know, rook b8? I mean, what do you want to do? Like, b4? Just hypothetically. Queen c7, for example. We can't, you know, we don't want to just, like, take here and give him a great outpost for his knight on c5. Yeah, I mean, maybe something weird like queen a5 is possible, sure. But more likely you're, like, walking into trouble, you know, if you do that. I think this, I don't like this b4 thing. You know, you're going to get hit by a3 and b4. You don't want to do that, necessarily. I think it's hard to play black, though. You know, both sides. So, so a4 is not necessary here. Actually, some woman played a3. Not such a stupid move. Um, the right idea to play for the break b4, probably... You know, I wouldn't be surprised of of anything, but I mean, even like G three is not ridiculous. Ryshevsky, Ryshevsky liked to play G three in these type of structures, for example, with ideas of like knight H four and knight G two. Some woman, I know. I mean, it's awfully sexist of me, but her name was too hard to say. Alright. 2300 some woman, right? If that was my wife, I'd be proud. Yeah, no, G3 is an important idea to stop knight f5, knight f4. But again, I think our queen is on the wrong track. Of course, Camel Clutcher would point out, like, sexist remarks by me. The clutcher, the masked clutcher. All right. A four. And now we're like stuck with no break necessarily. We might still play it. And then he, you did what I did. 
I always tell the story. I played this super strong Grandmaster by the Milov in Vegas, like, 15 years ago. And somehow I ended up doing this, even though I know it's, like, a bad move. It's just, like, fundamentally, like, wrong. You don't trade your, like, good bishop for black's bad bishop on g7. You couldn't play a worse move, strategically speaking. So I'm, I'm pretty much, like, insta-queen c2. I gotta get my knight to d2. Forget about that. It's a Petrosian system. But I'm open to other suggestions. The guy, Spec, his idea of 91 is not bad. You might even play knight c2, 93 or something. I don't know. This this is okay. I've had weird games. I remember playing Quinteros, for example. The, the Argentine Grandmaster in Blitz. And he, he would do, like, funky stuff. This is really an old memory. But playing him online, like, 20 years ago... He would do, like, Queen C7. I totally forgot, like, we had played these Blitz games. It's like, your queen is on an absurd square. Once Yuri Shulman beat me like this, too, it just looks stupid, but it's like, it just breaks the pin, you know, so... It's just, like, a way to break the pin. The only problem is, like, he still doesn't have anywhere to put his knight. Because, like, knight e8 loses the exchange to bishop e7. This is not, you know, this is not a great setup for black. It's a very artificial kind of uncoordinated. H3 is not stupid. H3 is not stupid, but I don't see like knight h2, bishop g4 happening necessarily, unless black just sits around and twiddles his thumbs. Let's see, queen e8. No place to put the knight, dude. There's no place to put our knight. Knight h2. King h8 a la Mark Hebden. And an Excel poker suggestion is like playing for bishop g4. I mean, let's see how this game went from 76. Rook a e1. Looks like Arsenal fans playing white. The primordial Mark Hebden. And now it's like, this doesn't even work because black's coming with f5. I think it's still an interesting position. For example, like, take, take, bishop d1. That actually makes sense with the rook swinging over here. I like white. But black has counterplay. You know, queen g6, maybe b5. It's a complicated position. He can also play bishop h6, trading off the bishop. Yeah, it's interesting. So you're also, you're also preparing rook a7. This is a terrible move. And now, Excel Poker plays knight e8. Um, I mean, obviously, if knight h5, the knight can... I don't know. Obviously. You should consider knight h5. Um, wait, might play g3, though. Knight h5 deserves consideration. Knight e8 is more passive. Bishop g7. King g7. Knight g7 is possible, a la the old Indian, or check Benoni. You're playing basically what is more of a check Benoni than a king's Indian, actually. So knight takes g7, part and parcel. Oh my god, Arsenal suggested g4. We need to look at that. Bishop h6, knight h5, g4. Can you hand over your chess passport? This is like Bent Larson 101. So we do knight f4, bishop f4, pawn f4, queen f4, and then there was a Larson game that was really similar to this. White's gonna get like annihilated if he's not careful. Arsenal fan, you should turn it around and pretend you're playing the Benoni. 
you might appreciate how dangerous this is for white. Like here, the first rule of Benoni Club, get control of e5. Second rule of Benoni Club, play for f5. Play rook a7 and transfer it over. White's going to get like blown away. You got to be really, really careful. No, I was actually thinking like g3. But it would be tough to decide to go h5 or e8. But I don't know about the capture. Like, I'm sure that XL Poker was maybe thinking about queen h6. You know, which is kind of annoying. Because then, like, if f5, you have knight g5, and then you have to go here. And I don't know how you, like, get rid of that. Oh, g3, knight of 4 anyway, Camiculture. Yeah, I'm having King's Indian, like... King's Indian, like, memories flood back, and I miss it. I just really, really, really find the Kings Indian difficult to play, especially in like online. Just in general, it's difficult to play anyway. But King takes okay. Bishop d three. Yeah, White traded off his own good bishop. How about the river guarding rook? If I've ever seen a position where rook a three is appropriate, like this is probably it. Forget about bishop d three. Let's just go here. This is a good chance that this rook will play. I mean, if black tries to go for it, he's going to have to be very, 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 very quiet. This rook could play. <clears throat> I think this is heads, hands down, like, absolutely most useful move for white. You don't retreat any pieces. Don't block anything up. It's really hard for black to play b5. But you have to take on a defensive sort of stance now. This this looks awkward. Yeah, the knight g5. Right. Like and I don't that's why I don't wanna do like I don't wanna do this, you know, and just be like surrendering to the fact that black has more attacking chances. Like even this is probably okay though. You have to blockade you have to play, you have to play f4, like, definitely. I want to make a note of these positions, though, like, if you get this type of structure, black is definitely, um, better off with, like, the pawn controlling d4. I lost to Igor Fuegel a lot of games where he played, like, Czech Benoni, g6 type stuff, yeah. But I mean, black's gonna be coming over here too. It's a nasty situation. I mean, really tough to play. White well, needs to try to play g4. If you get um, I have the book on my table, but if you if you have this is classic, man. I mean, it's like Ryszewski, the art of positional play. That's one of the top ten books I would recommend any day of the week to anybody of any level who hasn't read it. Um. Sam Yershevsky's best book. The um, the other book that's interesting is uh, Dynamic um, Dynamic Chess Strategy by by Suba, The Art of Positional Play Arsenal by Ryshevsky. It's a huge book. It's like out of print. I mean, huge, like, in importance. Um, you can buy, like, you can buy um, copies. But if you want to learn how to play this kind of position, there's a lot of really important games. Bishop d3. Yeah, it's, it's looking like we're, we're going to get hit by f5. Eventually. I was actually, I don't know about h3, I think he's heading for that too. He's got two options, knight h5 or knight g8 to unravel. So maybe h3 isn't such a good move here.
You already have enough pawns on the late squares. You know. What's it's it's like it's like the House of Representatives. No, it's the Supreme Court, basically. This is the Supreme Court. White white is like the white squares are Republican leaning justices. You're appointing another Republican leaning justice to the Supreme Court when you play H3. We have enough Republican leaning justices already. We need like another liberal justice with G3. I know that it's ironic because like it looks scary that way it might have weakened that, but I think the most support threat is knight knight here. I don't like bishop d3 though. Yeah, I don't think he should have done that. If anything, I think the bishop should probably go to f1. So g3. What would Shevsky do, for example? G3, knight f6, rook e1, knight h5, bishop f1. And then Sammy probably would would try to play maybe knight h4. But there's that trap, you know, let's say like rook... One of the classic King's Indian traps. If you play rook a7, I would probably play this. And now I don't know what black does, let's say... I don't know what black plays in this position. Maybe he's ready to play f5. But just say he doesn't. Let's say he just makes a waiting move of some kind. Um, I just wanted to point out this idea, which is really informative. If white plays this, sometimes knight f4 is strong. You know, it's an idea. I'm not, I think this particular position it's unclear. I don't know Cabrillo. Well, no. I just met him. I, I can't remember the circumstances. Someone introduced me to him. I just can't remember who it was that knew him, that introduced me to him when I was there. No, I only met him that one time. But I thought it was cool because he was training Ivan Isevich. This was back in, like, 2001. Um, or 2000. Maybe it was 2000, 2001, I think, 2001. Knight f4. But, you know, you can ignore it. It's kind of funny, like, if I take, then queen takes h4, and it's not clear who's better here. Oh, he seemed like a nice guy. He's an older grandmaster now. Um... But I don't really like bishop d3. I don't think we have a plan. Maybe. But what is it? I mean, where is this knight going to go? Yeah, you're inviting this. Too many Supreme Court justices on the white squares. So now you have to do, like, a really unfortunate move. Knight e2 isn't what we want to do. I mean, that knight... Knight is doing a good job. It's restraining like b5. It's supporting e4. We don't want to play knight e2. <coughs> but apparently, Excel Poker was, you know, a little impatient here. I think he should keep the tension, man. But maybe he was afraid of b4. I don't I wouldn't play this unless I had to. It's not a bad move for Excel Poker, but it does reduce his flexibility. I mean, is white really threatening like b4? Is he really threatening a5? I'm not sure. You could play like rook b8, and if b4, a5, then b5, then b4. It's possible he's right, you know? it would. I'd have to analyze the position like, deeper to be sure. Yeah, I, I definitely understand what you're doing, and it's not bad. I wouldn't do it unless I had to. Because, you you know, like I said, you, you re reduce flexibility. But this move is Arsenal fan. See, now this is a different situation. You can't sack a pawn here because there's no bishop on the long diagonal. So now every supreme justice is, is on the light squares. Black goes back. Knight h2. I, honestly, I think this is probably a draw. 
you know, I think a way can probably like just block it up. But I think instead of knight h2, I would play this. Knight g3 looks more appealing. It's basically morphed into a Roy Lopez. Like, seriously, if you showed me this position... I'm not sure. I, I might think it was a Roy Lopez, not a King's Indian. Knight h2, knight g8, and then the arsenal. Arsenal spirit animal. Amazing. This looks like you're playing arms in the Roy Lopez. Arsenal, the depressive optimist. I wouldn't call White's position amazing. You know what it makes me think? Do you think that Excel Poker went wrong by playing Knight H5 in retrospect? Can we understand something here? Wait a minute. You played Knight H5. Now he went here and you defended the threat. If you go for it with like F5. He was concerned about A5. Well, I mean, this deserves like major calculation. You might have a good position. I mean, like pawn takes pawn. Waits probably close to losing material. This knight to f6, hitting e4. Yeah, no, no, it's not convincing. The other suggestion I was going to make was knight g8. To go full Hebden. Obviously Kasparov knew a little bit about this too. But we're cranking down the F5 now. So White really has to do something. I think White has to bail. The Knight H2 suggestion, not so stupid here. And then on F5 we do the blockade again. Do the Watusi. Although it is possible to play f4. You know, I've had a lot of games where this type of shit happened, like, take, take, g5. Between here and point b, there's a lot of calculation that depend on, you know, between the strategic concepts, there's calculation. So, I mean, white has both options to consider, like, take, take, and then blockade, allowing the protected passer, but we're ready to this is very good for g4, too. But, I mean, at the same time, like, black has attacking chances. King h8, rook a7, rook over, you know, h5, pressure down the g file. Anyways, like, it's all in the Ryshevsky book. A lot of games like this. He has a number of good King's Indian games analyzed in there. Similar nature. Let's just take one little quick look at this. This doesn't work, right? Takes, 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 f5. No. There's no option, like we have to go back. You could play h5 for black, but I'm not sure you want to do that. Yeah, now, now white makes a risky move. But I'm taking a huge time in this game. I enjoy this position. I'm very interested in this type of position. When you play, when you play f4, I think with white, you need to consider how how is black. You know how much control does black have over the e5 square? You don't have to play f4 here, by the way. You're playing a strong player 
If you hold him to a draw, it's a good result. You have to consider the possibility of this, but you do have to watch out for, like, queen h4. It's it's probably okay, though. You have king up, defending it, and it's like a Lopez. And you've got f5 under control. I think white's got it under control. But this is, like, going for it. You know, when you play f4, you're, like, going for it, and you're risking... It's no longer like a blockade the whole board draw, you know. Right, knight e5 ideas, but how do you get a knight there? That's the problem. Your knights are not on track to go to e5, so... You also don't have like a rook on e7, and you don't have a queen on e7, so you have to be careful. There's always like this sort of sacrifice. Is there a problem here if we play queen takes? I mean, white, white wants to play e5 and take that away from you, probably. So. You know, what does Excel Poker do? Does he play like F6 and lock it down like Petrosian? Probably. Arsenal said uh, this position is, is awesome, but, you know, at the end of the day, if black blockades E5, I don't think that white is better. You'd never play F6? Seriously? I don't want to let white play e5, you know? Then he has like a protected passer. You can play queen e7 if you don't like playing f6. But I guess my point is like white plays knight f3 and now he's turning it again. The moral of the story is that if you want to stop e5, you have to play f6. g5 might be playable, but it's also like radically weakening. Well, let's say our, you know, Excel Poker does what he wanted to do. You know, he sits on there with his knight or whatever. So takes, takes, check. By the way, like, you have to play f6 now. You don't have another move. I under Oh, you mean for white? No, I mean, I'm thinking about this. Well, I mean, okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. How do you stop e5? You could probably do h6 with the idea of g5 if you really want to as an alternative. If you insist on not playing f6. But I mean, you have basically impermeable position after f6. It does look bad for your knights, though. You could play that. This also a little sketchy but at the end of the day I mean white has a bishop that's like a pawn I don't know though you know I mean it's like one this piece is like non-existent unless white can play e5 yeah maybe g5 is not good I have this followed by this and I'm gonna play this and if f6 I just took away my knight's best square I don't know where to go Let's see what the computer says. Queen takes f4. It's on the fence. But maybe we found... Okay. We found my move is good. White's better according to the engine. It loves space. But, yeah, I agree with you, Camel Culture. Everyone's pieces are bad. I mean, even if the position was, like, unbreakable, the computer is programmed to, like, space, so it's always going to say, like, even an imperfect...
even if if Petrosian had like an unbreakable blockade, this engine would still be saying like white is better, you know, symbolically, or whatever. But I think like basically like you know, Gary Kasparov is never winning a game against Tiger and Petrosian. The first in this position, it's it's a it's a force field. I mean, I don't think we're winning here. It's a rock solid position. Carlson maybe in 120 moves could beat somebody, but it's just very solid. But I don't think that XL Poker does like the. <laughs> but then again, if you play like Czech Benoni type positions, you gotta be willing to to go. Like turtle up. He takes f4. Um. Rook takes is awkward though, because we have no control of e5. That's the problem. At the very minimum, I mean queen e7. But the computer's plan of this, followed by this, followed by that, you know, that's classic. Yeah, knight g3, knight f5 is really a Pez peace sack. 500 master gains of chess. Very classic. Now it's a draw. I'd be willing to bet, like, if Stockfish played Stockfish 50 games in this position, it's probably like 50 draws. This is a this is a force field um, blockade. White space advantage negated by super blockade of e5. No other breaks. It's a it's a draw. I mean, unless there's some kind of tactic I'm not seeing here. I think the safest thing to do is just play bishop e2. I have a theory about positions like this, though. Um, move 11 has worked with me a lot and he knows what I what I call it this is like a one square position so it's like Nimzovich blockade you have a great blockade but it's like all your pieces like if you transfer your rook over your other rook you can like double up triple up on the e file but only one piece you know can be on e5 even if you have all your pieces this one square position is, it's a good blockade but it's hard for black to do anything else really you know he's just gonna hold the line Winning is not easy. So I'm not sure we should mess with it necessarily right away. Um, maybe you want to just double on the F file instead of knight F3. Okay, there's no reason you have to play bishop E2. He's not going to take your bishop, by the way. Let's just play rook F1. You know, he's not going to take this. I mean, it's the worst piece on the board. No, on any queen h4, we have king g2. Yeah, Lengel Bela, like, messed me up a few games in the Lopez with, like, h5. You do have to be really careful with this. This could be deadly. That is one thing that could dramatically change the situation. So maybe you're right. This is not so trivial. We have to watch that queen h4. Perhaps even, like, of all squares, maybe, like, bishop f1. That's rather passive, though. It does look like queen h4 is a good move. And, like, yeah. Okay, knight f3. Here comes the other knight. I still don't believe, like, black's winning. <clears throat> there it is. Now I'm going to draw this position against like a strong GM with white. If I'm if it's the last thing I do. Computer is not losing this to Magnus Carlsen. But I think you have no business going knight b5. You just need to like hold on to your your shit here. And realize like you're actually the one that could be in danger. There's no no provocation for this. This is a bad idea. I remember seeing this now. We covered this live. The knight b5 is a bad move. You have no reason to play that. This knight has a lot of a lot of um, flexibility. 
it can come back to d1 into e3 over to f2 drop to e2 f4 there's no no nothing happening there with knight b5 knight b5 is a bad move during the game i was wondering if if white had tactics based on like this and some sort of like rook takes f7 here black also has 95 though i mean actually that's that's a real possibility like takes knight takes check rook takes but i'm not sure black would want to trade pieces there so i was looking at this this during the game this bishop is is a horrible piece Unless you can play like bishop d1 and g5 and get it out on g4. You were just what? Yeah, trying to get knight versus bishop. Yeah, I mean, he's crazy to put his knight on b5 and let you take it. Not crazy, but I mean, he was low on time and, and didn't realize how bad it was. But I mean, it is, it is a major error. he has to to come back or play knight c7 this is a terrible move white's in time pressure let's say knight c7 rook a7 there's no tactics right we almost have tactics but there's no time there's no rook takes f7 there's nothing there right so i guess the moral of the story is that i mean there is a check on b2 that doesn't do anything you just have to bring it back, man. Look at his bishop on a6. XL Poker is trying to flag you here, but he'll probably just go back to c8, I imagine. You know, if you repeated moves. Now black's just much, much better. Because there's a possible a4 break he used later. This is provocative, but it makes sense. Maybe not necessary. Ah, uh, this is the issue. Oh no. White might be close to losing now. Um, because of this break, weakening the C4 square. Boom. Okay. Well, we need to be alert. I mean, this is a a kind of serious threat you should see a4 so let's say like queen c3 check just for argument's sake 95 again just for argument's sake let's say rook f2 king g8 king g2 and then i guess my point is like how does black win this position Objectively, he probably doesn't, you know. This is like a classic engine never loses. Even though black's better, you can't beat the computer with a bad bishop. I had like a million games like this with engines, and that was like all I could do was draw. This is like 20 years ago when, when computers, yeah, that's the only, maybe the only plan, Ars, to play g5 and knight f4. But obviously, like, G5, you know, G5 will entail risk for black, too. So the minute you pull the knight off of E5, he has stuff like rook, rook down, maybe H4, possibly E5. But yeah, that, that's your, your only legitimate chance to play for a win, looks like. But anyways, good game by, by these guys. 95 here, and then... Cautious play by black. But eventually, I didn't like h5 at the time. Maybe I don't like the plan at all, actually. Maybe Excel Poker should just play like knight d7 here. Drive him back. You could try some funky stuff, getting your queen in. 
maybe to e5 or h4. I didn't like the way he played he played h5. And white definitely has to play g5. So I mean fixing that doesn't really help black. White finally has a pawn on the right color. This is too. That that improves white's position theoretically. But he has a bigger problem. Now the a4 is strong. Actually, did you have that last move? No, his knight can't move till f7 is protected. So that protects f7. Now this is a threat. White should have never put his bishop on c2. White should have kept the bishop dominating the knight. You know, here is the best position for the bishop. Dominating the, the e5 knight. And giving you, like, man, if your bishop's on e2, you even have, like, potential sacrifices on h5. But then again, black would have e4. Okay, it's not so easy. Um, so we're going to have to be creative here. There is rook takes g6 check. Nope. Sneaky tactics with queen moves. No, I mean, even with the bishop on e2, he still has a problem with a4. Look, I mean, he never should have let you play bishop takes b5 in the first place, but, okay, it's beside the point. Maybe white can't defend this now, you know, because c4 is so weak. Keep thinking there's something here. I mean, okay, maybe C4, maybe it's not the end of the game. I mean, even if you do play A4. And Rook A1 allows Knight, Knight D7, I wasn't sure about that. No, it doesn't. Okay, yeah, okay, Rook A1, but okay, he could still do it. Very creative move 11. Never would have found that move on my own. I don't know. I mean, you can analyze this pretty deeply, I guess. I agree, though. I can't see anything better than rook a1 at this point. White is seriously worse. <laughs> the engine contradicts me. No, it's coming around. It's coming around. It wants to allow a4, though. It's minus 1.1. King g3, a4 takes, then takes c4. Yeah, well, we have to allow it. The million dollar question is white lost. Even in the final position, is white lost? White lost on time. Is white lost? Yeah, I mean, again, like, Grandmaster Magnus Carlsen playing black against Alpha Zero White. I just don't think he's going to win, still. Yeah. Yeah. It's still hard to win. Black has clearly the advantage, but I, I don't even know if the world champion could beat, beat himself or, you know, an equal strength computer. I have one idea. You could, you could like, you could like play knight e5 and sack the exchange on a4 with your knight on e5. So like, just turn off the engine. So, so theoretically, like, say black plays, like, knight e5, <clears throat> white just makes a waiting move, and then you go here. And white just, like, makes a waiting move. So my suggestion would be to play for a win by sacking the exchange. I mean, I don't know. I think in a practical game, that's what Magnus would do against the computer. Oftentimes, you know, the interesting thing, 
it's ironic, but sacrificing for the, the bad bishop, that's like the defender. This is like the defensive glue that holds White's position together. It's ironic that a lot of times that's the best way to, to actually break down the opponent's defense. I mean, we have queen a7, and then filtering in on the a file. It just seems like only, theoretically, only black can win, right? That's what I would do in a tournament game. But I guess you can't always just do that because your d6 pawn is hanging. It's just not enough. You know, it's probably a draw with perfect play. It, it, you know, look at the evaluation. Now, now it's still flipping around. Even at 2.2, I mean, is that necessarily a win? Yeah, it likes this for black. I guess we're over the edge that black is actually winning here. But certainly in a practical game, I am losing the Magnus like 90% of the time in this position with white. At least. Anyway, good game, guys. Very instructive. Move 11, submitting game from, from Grandmaster de Galway. Acerbate tip $10. Move up three sixty seven ninety one. Monochrome filed, followed, filed for, filed for chapter 11. From move 11, 367.91. How far are we? How far are we along? 18.4%. Donate send me to the world senior. Did I get the submission? Dude, you're not banned on Twitch, right? Have they banned you on Twitch yet? I might have to demod you. Don't get banned on Twitch or I have to like demod you for status reasons. Can't be having like Twitch ban moderators on my stream. Sorry. Copy link. I gotta check. Do you remember the remember the Finnish I am who said I was harassing him? He tried to report me to Twitch. I was like, whatever, dude. He was an idiot. Um all right. What am I doing? Pasting. You don't remember? That was a while ago. It was, it was like two years ago. He came to my stream and he was like, I don't know. He was saying stuff, weird stuff. Like, why is your head not on straight? Or, you know, he was like making weird comments about how I looked or something. I finally lost patience with him. And um, just like told him to go screw himself. I think he was like trying to troll me, but then he like turned it around and said I was harassing him. I was like, okay, you're an idiot. Bye bye. Copy. All right, we're going to do this here. That wasn't his exact words, I'm paraphrasing. That's not what he said. It was something similar to that. Don't take anything I say literally. Just a disclaimer. Just a general disclaimer for the stream. Never take anything I say 100% literally. That'll keep us safe from, from lawsuits. Oh, the Psycho NM. Isn't he a Fide Master? Dude, he wasn't really a mod. He was less a mod than you are. He, he, like, I modded him because I didn't have a moderator. It was the same thing. Like, I don't know. I didn't, I needed a moderator. And he was like, he volunteered. I didn't, like, want to make him, like, a mod long term. Yeah, that guy's crazy. I don't know what happened to him. Um product of a bad home environment, I assume. Alright. Slaggy analysis stream.
He's probably shoot, shooting up a shooting up a shopping center at this moment. Um, Slaggy analysis stream. What the hell am I doing here? Yes, create study. Not a good joke, but young white males have a tendency to do that. Don't set camel culture off, no matter what you do. The camel culture seems pretty well. He's well. Well balanced. Alright. Schieber Spieler versus Arsenal fan. That's in the list now. Uh oh, we got another game. Oh, speaking of well balanced youngsters. Okay, don't do any mass shootings. You're in the range. Young white males. Angry young white males. Who hate females. Um, female, yeah, female justice bot. FM. You'll not think I'm well balanced after this game. Alright. Maybe my computer is heating up because it's really it seems, oof, a little bit of a you got a little bit of a sort of sent upon loss there. But we're not going to focus on that. My computer suddenly seems to have slowed down. Slaggy analysis stream. All right, guys, don't forget to donate large amounts of money to my trip for my trip to Italy in November. Send Slaggy to the World Senior. Make me a Grandmaster. That'd be so awesome if we do it. It'll be... I swear, I'll send all the donors a t-shirt if I become a GM at the World Senior. We'll print up our own t-shirts. Um, who's playing now? Can't read the names. Oh, do I have I miss okay, I missized my board. We had a little a little accident last last stream with board sizing. Uh, okay. M eleven. Now we can just see it. M seven. Okay, we're not doing this game yet. It's it's O'Kelly versus Gollum Beck. Obviously, neither of these players are household names, but O'Kelly was considered quite strong. The most interesting thing about O'Kelly is that he's a Belgian with the name O'Kelly. Um, the most interesting thing about him, he was a Grandmaster, I believe. Quite a strong player. Stronger than Gollum Beck. And I'm not sure about Gollum Beck. He later became, like, very big, big wig in British chess. But, um, objectively his strength, I don't know. I am strength. Um, the other interesting thing about Galway, the Galway, was the fact that When Rubinstein was like old, he was like in a sanitarium, I guess in Belgium. He and O'Kelly would like go in there and like hang out with like the retired crazy Rubinstein. He was one of the last people to play. He was one of the last people to actually play like recorded game with Rubinstein. Rubinstein literally only played like a handful of recorded games in the sanitarium, you know, and O'Kelly would like go in there and, and hang out with him, which is interesting. But Rubenstein actually lived for a very long time, you know, in the sanitarium, I guess, till like the sixties or something crazy. Um, anyway, O'Kelly versus 
Gollum back. Even like a raving crazy Rubenstein you could learn a lot from. I would imagine. No, I don't think he was really like that. I don't know what the deal was. Yeah, yeah, he had a son who played chess. Though he wasn't like a really strong player. Yeah, that's true. Rubenstein's son apparently could play on a reasonable level. I don't know if he was like master strength or what. But he wasn't a professional chess player. Maybe he's still alive, I don't know. Um, Gallenbeck was an author and probably like head of the British Chess Federation for years and years. Knight f3, g6. Yeah, I mean, this is probably one of Black's more interesting Aliakin variations. I have a friend who played this line all his life with black. Well, like, Rubenstein was a hundred years old thirty years ago, man. Uh, let's see, thirty years ago would be, like, 1992. And... Born in 1892. Okay, Rubenstein's a little older than that. If he had a son when he was really young, maybe. Um, Alright, knight g5. Yeah, this is a little known fact. Like, this is... This is an idea. But I'm... I'm thinking of bishop c4... And knight g5 later, right? Isn't it on the next move? No. It's not here. So what position am I thinking of? Bishop c4, knight b6, bishop b3, bishop g7, knight g5. That's the position that I'm thinking of. This is this is the most classic variation. I was always afraid to go go and play this line with black. But I have a friend who used to play it. It was his main opening. But I remember one time he lost to this guy, Robert. Schulman from from New York State. It's like uh, he also beat me. The guy's a good player. He was like feeding a strong fide master. Someone referenced him a while back. I don't remember on what what sub sub subject that was. It wasn't you move eleven right? You never met Robert Schulman. I don't remember why Robert Schulman. I lost to him. My friend lost to him in this line. The only player I ever saw beat my friend. E6. This is the ba the basic main line in the in all the old like Aliakin books. The most important variation. Queen F3. So judging by the stats, I mean it looks like it's still it's in trouble. Look who's playing black. I mean, Dennis... What's his name? Daniel Black Blackaturo. He's always like, getting crushed by world-class players in the Olympiad. Reinderman. Ferdinand Hellers is still around? Holy shit. Ferdinand Hellers, the Swedish Grandmaster? Jesus Christ, he's got his rating from, like, 1993. That's the secret, man. You have to, like, not play for, like, 20 years, so your rating is, like... It's not going to stay at, at 2592, man. The guy hasn't played in like 30 years. That's crazy. Um, Alright, best line I think is still the short team and king walk line. 
what? Yeah, this is crazy. Wow, I, I never saw this. It's interesting. Judging by the statistics, it sucks. Lubojevich... <laughs> Lubojevich was known for playing crazy stuff, of course. But this looks like the kind of move that would work particularly well like in the pre-computer era. So h6, knight f7, queen f3 check. King walk variation? We're talking about king walks? Wow, Alexander Bortnik? The bullet king? Did this? Oh, okay. He's not, yeah, he's not interested in king e6. Well, I mean, anyway, like, best case scenario, it's like a draw a repetition. Black has no way to play for a win there. I mean, white might be winning, but he has at least a draw. So, obviously, a grandmaster has to play knight f6. He takes f6. He takes f6. It's pretty mental, man. I mean, you're basically playing the exchange French with h6, g6, f6, and you're king on f7. That can't really be a good idea, you know, if you're playing with all your marbles. The Bortniks. <laughs> it sounds like the family that lives next door. Yeah, I mean... The Bordniks live next door, and they, they play the Aliakin every chance they get. They even talk about it at dinner. But I mean, this is obviously, like, pretty crazy. If White really... What am I looking... Let me ask a question. Okay, like, if Kamsky was playing White, like, would he lose this position? No. Like, there's no way. You need, you need to have a grip on reality to lose... No grip on reality to lose this position with white. But anyway, there's a psychological effect to black's play. H6 is definitely not black's best move. So I guess knight g5 is objectively, like, incorrect. But h6 is not the reputation. So Lev Albert, 1977... You know, but again, I still don't see a problem with White's position. Worst case scenario, look like Black was Arsenal. Why? Can I just hear why? Like, why would Black be miles better here? I don't understand. Like, how can you, how can you say that? Like, his, his king, like, the position around his king, like, all of the pawns have moved up around his king. He has no significant de development advantage. And the pawn structure is totally symmetrical. I just don't understand how you can say, like, black seems miles better. Central control? If anything, like, white is better. White, white is control of e4. Uh, a strong central pawn on d4. There's no way in the world that black is better here. Maximum 0, 0.0, I say. I'm afraid to look. We're not going to talk about it, okay? Let's just pretend that never happened. I mean, you suggested h4. I was afraid it was going to say like 0, 0.01 for black. It's 2.1. Jesus Christ. We need to have like a separate way. We need an arsenal evaluation 
<laughs> like a, a completely new way of evaluating chess positions based on Arsenal fan. I mean, I'm being nice, right? I'm like, okay, it's equal, it's symmetrical pawns, minimum equal. I will say, though, I'm not convinced by bishop c4 check. At the end of the day, I still say I'm not sure I want to, like, chase the enemy king to a safer position. Dude, I'm not bullying Arsenal. What do you mean? I'm not bullying him, I mean. He's a thorn in my side. He's always questioning me. We're certainly not bullying anyone. I mean, he should report me to Twitch for bullying him. I'm totally bullying him. I was very nice. I, I, I like accepted that position could be zero point zero. I'm just saying, like that's crazy. Okay, let's see the game. Right, this is Move Eleven's game. Submission. You check the H four. It was minus point two, but forced move not to be what? Why am I not synced here? How am I not synced? In my own study. How do you get unsynced in your own study that no one else has access to? Alright, F six. So now things get really interesting. So I'm thinking, why don't we just take on F six? Worst case scenario we have a Bortnik situation. Like take, take. Knight f3. Ain't no way that white is worse here. Eugenio Torre with the Arsenal team. You like what you like, man. It's alright. You know, we're not all the same. I'm trying to play like the computer, but I'm not a computer. So what good does it do me? That's a young Eugenio Torre. Good year, 72. But um, I still think black just has weaknesses. You know, that's all there is to it. I think when you play the Alyekin defense, you're you're doing like a, you're a bullfighter. You're trying to it, you're trying to like you know risk your life and and limb, waving a red flag. Come and get me, you know, and overextend yourself. Um. But at the end of the day, 2400 beats 2200, even from a bad position. Okay, no surprise. But the real question is, like, what should white do here? So pawn takes pawn is, I'm expecting knight takes f is probably safer for black, actually. Bishop c4 is d5. How bad is this? I say bishop d3, right? We've got a... Yeah, it looks like a Lissitzen Gambit. This is basically a Lissitzen Gambit. Black's clearly worse. So yeah, I guess Pawn takes a safer. But White's just better. So, what's the moral of the story? East, yeah, F6 isn't the solution here. F6 is a bad move. Yeah, Colorado Gambit. Excuse me, very similar to like a Lissitzen, but that's just because you're from Colorado. You think everything is Colorado Gambit. How did Brian Wall do against your sister? That's what we all want to know. Or has it not happened yet? We're all waiting to find out. Ask, ask Brian, no. Right. Never mind. Ask Brian to send me some, some bot nets while he's at it. He beat your sister with knight a3. What is that, like knight a3, c3, knight c2? Jack Young was his good friend, and they Jack Young had Bozo's Chess Emporium articles, and he, 
He had this one opening that Brian liked a lot called The Squirrel. I thought it was something with 983. Like, the squirrel takes a nut and it, like, hides with its nut in the tree or whatever. So you do, like, knight a3, c3, and knight c2. Maybe it was something like that. I can't remember. It was, like, the, the, the squirrel running out and, like, getting his nuts and, like, taking them back into the nest. <laughs> I don't remember. He would just, like, play weird openings for the sake of playing, like, absurd stuff. But f6 is a bad move. Feingold would agree. So that's ugly. Black's supposed to play c6, guarding his knight. In the event of <clears throat> c4, Misha. Look at this. Now all of a sudden, all of a sudden we have like serious players in the list. Tal, the Latvian school of the Aliakins defense. Lev Albert, and another guy I recognize, Kakageldiev, David Gluckman, I think some video master from Australia or New Zealand pretty much transposed to a phoenix oh with a dumb knight on a3 that's not the way you're supposed to do the squirrel safe to assume Brian didn't win because of the opening so knight c7 queen f3 damn you have to play it anyway wow dude this variation is this variation is a little dubious. Yeah, that is a problem though. Like, there's no good square for the knight. Now, there's no going back to the natural f3 square. Igor Ivanov with white was the game. Igor drew. Savan beat Lev Albert in 78. Before he immigrated. This must be like critical. I think Igor like immigrated around seventy nine. Bishop of five makes sense though. Jeez. Wait, that's G4. Wait's move is pretty cowardly, right? Knight G3. Anyways, this didn't happen in the game. Game in question F6. Sorry, c4, f6, c4. Unnecessary complications, but interesting. So guys, I'm sorry, we're taking too long. I'm having too much fun tonight with interesting positions. Thank you for submitting some interesting games. c4. Does bishop e6 after queen f3 lose to some tactic? We were talking about a different position. Knight g5, c6, c4, here, queen f3. Wait, you said this, does bishop e6 lose to some tactic? Yeah, weird games tonight. Not that I can see, you know, nothing obvious, right? Wait, no, I mean, I don't see anything obvious. There's D5. Maybe pawn takes pawn and knight E4. You know, if pawn takes pawn, you could play queen takes, but it looks kind of weird. I don't know, I'm, I'm actually attracted to this line.
with the idea of bishop f4, but black will have like queen b4 check. This looks really scary, you know, here. Because of this and bishop g5. Maybe black's even okay there if he plays bishop b7, though. Probably the truth is out there. You like that? Move 11's gone totally postal. Postal chess. Pawn takes, pawn takes. Bishop takes. Bishop b5 check. But I still fail to see what this does. That's a neat idea, move 11. You gotta give move 11 credit. But at the end of the day, like, we just go here, it's... It's just like, damn, dude. Yeah. I mean, even 97. It's a nice idea, but there's nothing there. I think we probably just, like, take. My line was takes. So this is probably best. I actually looked at queen takes, bishop f4. I missed something. Wow, he can take here. This is... Yeah, Arsenal, maybe you invented something. The Arsenal variation. Even Tal didn't play bishop b6. I gotta be honest with you, man. I like this better than playing f6. I'm with Feingold on this. If I can avoid playing f6, I'll probably do it. Yeah. So the best line, according to the computer, is is pawn takes, queen takes, now. And then just develop. Yeah, I like it, it's more flexible. I agree with you. Does computer agree? Computer likes F6 though. But anyway, it's a worthwhile novelty. It's a totally playable novelty. Yeah, now actually the engine is, it's getting close. It thinks like they're really close. They're equal. Holy shit. I mean, the the bottom line is that it's less weakening. Yeah. I mean, I bet if we look on Lee Chess, there'll be a few games. None? That's unbelievable, right? Every kind of normal opening you look at, when you find four over-the-board games, there's like a hundred on Lee Chess. Zero. Of course, I think I have it set... To not take in bullet. Yeah, I'm not doing bullet. I guess if we add bullet, we might find some. Still zero. Wow. That's gotta be like one of the first times I've ever searched a position and found less games in the Lee Chess. It's less games in Lee Chess than in real life. That's really weird. Dude, the Russians, yeah, my friend was from St. Petersburg. They were really big on, they were really big on Elyakin's defense. I mean, you know, actually, St. Petersburg is not that far from, like, Latvia, northwest Russia. It's in the same region. I mean, I guess there was kind of like a regional. All the best. Actually, Elyakin was from Latvia, right? Nimzovich was from Latvia. Um, from that region. Tal. It's a regional thing. It should be called, like, the Baltic defense. Alright, knight g5 here, here. This is crazy. Bordniks are Ukrainian. Yeah, I mean, they probably just had a coach who happened to teach them that opening. Um, this is a much later generation. My friend was from a generation where he grew up in the 70s in, in like, St. Petersburg, so. He, 
he was like in the same he was in the same pioneer palace with like Udasin. I was honestly always afraid to play this line of the Aliakin because it's so complex. But it's probably better. G6 is probably better than Bishop G4. I mean, the, the Bordniks are, are right in a way to play it. it. It's probably better and it's much more complicated than the lines of Bishop G4. It's much more complicated than the exchange variation. Objectively. Just look at this one position. We're like, we're like totally confused. All right, back to master database. Wow, no games in the master database. What if we take, can we look at this for a minute? I just want to know. We need to consider this because I mean, black has less space. He, you know, he wants to simplify the game. Can I play like G4, the spike? Spike. I don't know. It's crazy. Just saying. What if takes? I mean, black's not down any material, right? What if I counterattack your center with like c6 or something? It looks really bad for black, but is it? Are you sure? See, I'm not sure, because white's development is but also slow. Obviously, it looks scary on the surface, but I mean, both sides have no pieces developed here. So you have like completely different views. Excel poker's like looks really bad for black. Wait, f6, e6, f takes g5, d5, c6. But anyway, I, I assume you guys have, have opposing views. I'm gonna stay above the fray here. But I mean, white needs to find a move. I don't want to trade queens. Are you going to take? Then queen takes d5. Black's completely out of the woods. Dude, you trade queens, I think I think black's out of the woods. I mean, I'm sorry. But this pawn is slightly overextended, and the queens are off the board. I, I'm, not, I'm not trading queens with white. So you got to play something else. Let's say bishop c4. That's a good move, right? That's got to be a move, right? Now we're talking. Bishop c4. But anyway, okay, hypothetically, pawn takes pawn. And now what are you going to do? Trade queens? Duh. No. Bishop takes? Hello? Now I have e6. What are you going to do? What's white going to do? He's going to have to trade queens. And then this like drops with check. Check. He doesn't trade queens. Cd what? Bishop d e6. Yeah, Excel Poker's sensible suggestion to play knight c3 instead. But I'm still like not convinced. One move is bishop g7. I would assume, like, takes, takes. This is starting to look creepy. Now white has developed a, an initiative. So I guess black has to take here. And that's, like, critical. Yeah, it looks promising. This looks promising. Probably the best. Yeah, it's ironic, but even queen takes. I was going to say this. I'm not surprised. It's it's a problem, because this is hanging, and and you can't really like bring my knight to d5. So it all falls apart. Okay, but maybe c6 isn't best. 
Yeah, it's not best, it's best, it's not best, it's best. It's a problem. Yep. Yeah. Alright. G4, the spike. I told you guys that's the best move. Nobody believes me. Well, not losing the G5 pawn is important. Anyway, like it looks like the Bortniks could play it. The Bortniks play this position like in, in thematic games all the time. Um, between movies. On movie nights. They're playing that position all the time. <laughs> totally standard. Alright. The Americans. Oh, it's like knight b4, queen a4 check. Knight c6 is one of those things. Oh, that's cool. You can do the keel defense here. There's a lot of wrinkles in this one. The classic keel theme. Queen a4 check, knight c6. And if d5, then knight d4. That's illegal. b5. b5. Yeah, the classic. Oh, this is great. Guys, if we get positions like this, we're never going to be able to finish the stream. That's an awesome position. That's a tasty bagel. I just want to confuse myself. Obviously, E takes F6. Clearly, this is a totally normal position. So that's best, apparently, best move. Yeah, it's like the the keel Scandinavian you just take and then play like a3 and kill it take the fun out of chess it's just again it's like a good exchange French again where black has weaknesses I like this position a lot though that's like weird the board Knicks have already studied this for sure Standard Bordnik dinner conversation. Um, anyway, let's let's go through the game. So, night before wasn't played. The keel maybe wasn't invented in the Scandinavian when this game was played between O'Kelly and and Harry Gollenbeck. But I still think like you know you really ought to not complicate against stronger players. F takes G five. D5. Oh, snap. That looks familiar. Wow. That, that reminds me of someone on Sound vs. Morales. It's a peace sacrifice, boys and girls. Can I get my king to, to D8, please? I'm thinking c6. I like how black played bishop g7. My first idea is c6 with the idea of queen c7 and king d8. First of all, when you have a pawn structure like that, the ultimate pawn chain, like someone on sound had, generally speaking, I want to undermine it. Secondly, this is checkmate. So I'm thinking we can do both things, avoid mate and undermine the enemy pawn chain by playing c6. The point is queen f3 is not forced mate because of queen c7. Now it's possible, it's possible white has something here. But I didn't see it yet. Queen check here.
It's just it's very reminiscent to me because I played the I play the uh, what's it called the Saint George with black. I was looking at an F six Saint George where the pawn is wedged on D six today, so it's basically the same thing on the other side of the board. Um, very similar. How does White you know prove his case? Bishop takes G five. Pawn takes pawn. That could be dangerous for Black, so maybe he wants to refrain from opening the file. I would assume this. Black's up a piece, so he can always give back a piece. When he wants to give back a piece. Under the right conditions. Another fascinating position. Can you sack the D-pawn with knight c3 and knight b5? Computer again thinks white's better. But we have a fascinating position. Dude, Arsenal, your idea from the other game applies here, where the bishop comes back to attack this diagonal. That's the second game of the stream where we talked about like this pawn chain. White's down a piece as the the bishop g5, bishop d2, that's very funny. Wow, this is fascinating. Crazy positions that can happen. Um Okay, so anyway, this is O'Kelly versus Gollumbeck. He sacks a piece. D5. Black plays bishop g7. Totally normal, but reflexive move. I didn't know O'Kelly... I mean, um, yeah, O'Kelly was, like, so psycho. I didn't know what to expect here. I would anticipate... Maybe queen f3 inducing rook. Queen f3 inducing rook f8 or something. Um, you know, preventing black from castling. Maybe bishop d3. But he plays a4, threatening to win a piece. That kind of smells of preparation. Clearly, black has to play a5. This is pretty standard. He's all in. A5 is basically forced. I mean, you got the, the Emery Tate inspired sort of rook a3. Um, Tate liked to play like queen f3 and a4 against the Aliakin. He probably saw the odd O'Kelly game. H4. Yeah, it's inspired attacking chess, right? Bishop d3, rook takes h7. Nice knowing you. I'm still... I'm still saying I like the c6, get me out of here. <laughs> king d8, get me out of here. I'm not castling king side variation. This is why I wanted to play c6 and, and queen c7 and king d8, because I know I'm going to get checkmated here. g takes h4, rook takes h4. This is like the Overlook Hotel when you read like red rum on the mirror of the room, you know? It's time to leave. He should have had his king on like d8 and c7 by now. I'm, I'm totally out of there, man. We already are ready to see like bishop d3. Wow. Yeah, he, he already, now he saw the writing on the wall. He played bishop takes e6. He's like, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm ready. I, I admit like white has a strong attack. So he's sacking back the piece. But I mean, you lose your late score bishop in doing this. So now I'm, I'm thinking, that's the difference between white and black. Really like the magic bishop. The white square.
weight squares. Now we know where like Emery Tate got his got his uh, inspiration. Though I think it was largely like Velimirovich. Queen c8, rook a3. He's like a total psychopath. Knight d4. Rook e3. Yeah, I mean, white's coordination is a little messed up. This this isn't really doing it for me. These pieces. It get you get the impression like O'Kelly likes the major pieces a little too much. He's starting to play like a he's starting to play like a random noob in your high school class. The unrated kid in high school. <laughs> like rook a three, whatever. This is crazy, man. Oh my god. Didn't knight e5 just gain enough time for queen e6? I don't see why. Because of queen h3. You're missing queen h3. Ars just... He was looking at other queen moves. He's just going to play queen h3 and then kick your ass out of there. You probably looked at other queen moves. You can't get him... You can't get him off. No, no, C4 is covered, dude. I introduce you to Rook on H4. Um, and Bishop on F1. Thus, the Rook on H4. Now, one move that you should consider, but doesn't work right, is Knight D8. It would be nice, though. Does this work? I like this a lot. Rook takes h7, queen takes e6. Check. Word to the check. Are we hanging on here? You get the feeling this O'Kelly guy was someone who liked to trade queens. Rook e3. Dude, you're dropping a queen, Holmes. I hope you're prepared for that. He has to trade queens. Possibly bishop e2. No, he has to. Defending the, the bishop on g7. Triple exclaim. Now we have to exchange. Or you want to be fancy pants and play this. Bishop d3. Triple exclaim. But I think anyway, that would block the rook. It's kind of stupid. I mean, king f7, and then you just like have to trade rooks. And now your rook is dumb. Who submitted this game anyway? I mean, I can't believe knight d8 holds. Oh, you mean rook e3 right away. Oh, shit. Damn. That's the refutation of Lack's entire position. Yeah, I missed it. I mean, Castles is possible, right? That looks safe. Castles is totally safe. Nothing bad could possibly happen. No, Rookie 3 here. Now Black is facing Annihilation. He has to castle Kingside. And it's time for the beatdown. This looks gruesome. It's time for for the um, ambulance. I'd be surprised if Rook H7 doesn't win. Does this work? It would be really sick if it does. I'm afraid it doesn't though. This like the weak the weak link there on e6. Shit, it almost works. Damn. <sighs> doesn't work. White's not winning here. I don't believe it. 
Wow. This is an amazing position, man. But ninety four is better. Okay. The computer confers ninety four is better. But notice like O'Kelly was lost according to the engine. It's like plus two. Ninety four is better. Check, King D one. But we don't know, like this could have been a blitz game. I mean I don't know where this was played. Now black played King D eight. It's a good move. Harry Gollumbeck. Harry the H pawn. Hello. Oh my god. It's a good thing our king is on D1. Dude, that's really, really ill. Hey, look, it's magically, like, protecting that. That's crazy. He had to lose the knight. Damn. And now black's, like, losing. Excel Poker is an expert in two pieces versus rooks. And computers, like, completely agree. Shit, black's lost now. It's totally over. I learned from Stockfish that, like, rooks are worth only 4.8 points of material. Little known fact. Move 11, what does Larry Kaufman say? I mean, I'm going to the World Senior. I need to know how much rooks are worth. Does anybody know? I thought, you know, I mistakenly thought that rooks were worth 5 points of material, but it turns out they're worth, like, slightly less. I think it's like 4.8. We just round it off to 5 to make it simple. But it's costing me a lot of games. But if you think about it logically right, think about like how chess beginners books are laid out. Knights are worth 3. Bishops are worth 3. Queens are worth 9. Rooks are worth 5 etc. You know that like in the real world it would be impossible that everything is like rounded off to the even number. I have this classic book that's like a hundred years old. Staunton's Handbook of Chess. It's the only book that I ever saw. It's the only book that I ever saw that claims that rooks are worth, I mean, minor pieces are, bishops are worth 3.5, sorry. Knights are worth 3. He said that bishops are worth 3.5. Well, if, if rooks are worth 5.2, then, I mean, judging by my game with Excel Poker, minor pieces must be worth like three point something. Oh no, Eric Kishlik. Do you remember the kid who came to your house and like wouldn't leave? That was the issue I had with him. He was a weird guy. Alright, remember when you were a little kid and someone came over to your house and your parents were like, when is little Johnny gonna leave? I ran into that problem with Kishlik. He's a strange bird. You were the guy that wouldn't leave? Well, maybe he just didn't want to go home because his home life sucked. I heard he gave up chess to become like a Republican like spam bot or something. Better money. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. He was a weird guy. I don't know where he is. We hung out a little bit. I mean, we played a few games and, and we were friendly, but he was kind of weird. He has uh, Asperger's. But not real bad. Um,
with Wolfie? Really? I like Patty. Alright. Patty was a big talent. He could have gone far. Alright, anyway. Gave up chess like so many. Oh, he's hanging out with Wolf. He's like back to San Francisco. That makes sense. I don't understand though. Maybe not. Like Wolf was moved. Wolf like was in San Francisco and then moved to... He was playing the U.S. Chess League in, like, Virginia or something. Asterburger's bait. So what are you going to do? Win this position? Patrick was cool with me. Like, he would play Blitz with me and stuff. Um, when I was, like... Feed a master. Even even that. He was a good guy. He seemed a little stuck up, but his parents were like Harvard professors and stuff. So it's hard to be not stuck up when your parents are like Harvard professors. He's um. He was always good to me. Not 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 like much, but I mean, you know, to just play Blitz with the Potzer, um, you know, someone who was like a non-second, that's pretty cool. He was respect respectful. White's hanging out, man, but he's not winning yet. These central pawns bother me a little bit. It's crazy how hard a time White had here. I mean, I'm getting the feeling like maybe O'Kelly's strength wasn't the end game. But it's looking like it's falling apart now. It's gone. I introduce you to the end of days. That G pawn is highly motivated. over. Can't lose a G pawn. The G pawn is where it's at, man. Oof. That's an oof. This is over, dude. Nice game move, Levin. That was a real nice suggestion. Really nice suggestion. Anyway, guys, I'm enjoying the games tonight, taking too much time. Astrobate is nice. Thanks, Move 11, for the submission. Astrobate, thanks for the tip. $10. Send me to Italy. That was a very cool game. Cornflake Kid versus Astrobate. Now we go from o O'Kelly to Astrobate. From good to better. Asper, you had to submit a Bodler attack with black. Are you serious? Are you serious about this? All right, let's do it. G6. I told him this is not the best move, but he doesn't care. It's cool. It's like Asterbate versus Asterbate. He's playing the Grand Prix with white and playing the Hyper Accelerated Dragon with black. Please don't tell me it's like a guy who went like knight g5 and dropped his knight. You're playing e6 ridiculously early here. Who is Bodler? What is a Bodler? See, the first rule of chess sites when you when you build a chess site is like you don't get the opening names for your opening explorer from Wikipedia. You actually consult a knowledgeable expert or go to, let's say, Walter Korn's, like, Modern Chess Openings or something, you know? But whoever, like, built Lee Chess Openings for, they got the opening names from Wikipedia. 
I'm just, I'm, I'm assuming, you know. No one ever heard of Bodler, and it shouldn't be, like, an opening name. But whatever, okay? Now it will live in infamy because of Lee Chess. I never heard this name in my life. In my entire life. Who, who is Bodler? I guess we can find out on Wikipedia. Um... Bowling attack. Yeah, why play e6, Astrobate? Why play it so early? You just played g6. What are you doing? Conquer d4 first. This is bad. Now you're like bust, busto after d4. Maybe not busto. You've got this. Check. Yeah, it's not busto. Okay. You've got d5. Alright, you confused him. Knight f3. Guys, what does Astrobate do when when he doesn't know what to do in the Sicilian? We've we've discussed this before. Modern chess opening theory. Great book. He plays a six. The the universal. Why are you playing g6 if you don't want to play bishop g7? I don't understand. Why did you play g6 to control the f5 square? Try to understand like there's a reason behind the moves. Like, why are you playing g6? You're playing it to play bishop g7. It's not about controlling f5. It's not about controlling h5. The idea is to develop your bishop to g7. But it's like, for some reason, like randomly, you're like, no, I'm not going to play bishop g7 here. Are you going to develop your bishop to another square? Like h6? Are you afraid of e4, e6? Efficiency. Second time I've seen this name, David Rubens versus Ginsburg, 1981. Today. I didn't know this player, but I've heard of him. He must be a West Coast guy. I don't know. Maybe not. Actually, Ginsburg lived in New York forever. And then he moved to Arizona. Maybe he was the East Coast, but 81. I was playing Parcheesi in, in like, fourth grade. Um... It's funny that a couple of people played e6. Ginsburg was not among them. Mark is a good player. e6, knight f3, and then a6? Why? Why not complete your development with bishop g7? I don't know what the best move is for white. Anybody? Astrobate would play a4. I'm kind of leaning toward like d3 at this point. I don't know. I was thinking d4, but then we walk into d5. And I'm not really sure how good this is. So maybe the best solution is just simply d3, you know, b5, bishop b3. If d5, I don't know. But the a4 is, is overplayed. a6, castles, b5, right. He's playing for the Noah's Ark trap. See, that's the problem with castles now. White has to play bishop b2, which is like... Now he's playing the summon a sound Larson attack down a tempo. White basically just like blew an entire tempo with with Bishop E2. Speaking of Asperger's. Asturbate, why would you play knight to h6?
Seriously, this is the center over here, right? This is the center. That is the center of the board. That is the most important point in, in the game. And your next move is knight h6. Why not like rook a7? Or queen a5 or something. This is center of the board. I totally, I'm okay with bishop b7. I'm okay with like bishop g7, develop and control the center. Even knight e7 isn't that bad. Although I don't think I like this. I really think we have to play one of the bishops to the long diagonals. <laughs> Queen e5 is hard to understand, but so is knight h6. You know? Like... An alien life form whispered in your ear. I mean, I know I play knight h6, 3am defense as a joke, but even that's better. I mean, that's on like move two. But now we've played all these other pawn moves like this, 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 and this, and h6 knight. Its relation to these pawn moves is is kind of vague. The problem is he's getting blasted in the middle of the board with d4. Like, there's no time for this. Of course it's similar to Close Sicilian. Knight h6 is a thing. But he's getting blown away in the middle. The biggest problem, of course, is like pawn takes, queen takes. And you're just... Deep black. Now what was the name of the Spanish guy who plays crazy stuff? The Grandmaster? Who's the Spanish Grandmaster from the 80s who played all the weird openings? Not Bell and Lopez. That's like Pia Kramling's dad. No, not him. There's another guy. Maybe it wasn't Spanish. Move 11 knows who I'm talking about. Modern Grandmaster. Dude, ask me what makes you play this? Yeah, Manuel Cast Castillo. <laughs> it looks like you're going to Manuel Castillo here. D4. Bye-bye. It was nice knowing you. Alright, at least he didn't take on D4. If move 11 was still here, he knows who I'm talking about. He went under the account Deep Black on ICC, I think. Maybe I'm confusing Grandmasters, though. This is not okay for Black. I'm thinking, what would Steinitz do? Man, he can't play F5. Shit. You know, there's no doubt that Astrobate is a genius. Pawn takes pawn. Maybe. I really want to play f5. But the problem is, like, I don't know. We probably don't have enough here. This is crazy. Yeah, but I mean, black takes with the, takes with the pawn, right? This suddenly became a good piece, like the knight has f5. I'm really not that sure, like what white should do here. It's it's strange. Strangely, not that simple. You can play ninety five. Makes me even less sure about what's going on. Just crazy. Yeah, best move, and white is better by a fraction.
Well, it is only marginally better here. After all these ridiculous moves that Astro Bay played, it's pretty crazy. He did lose a tempo with Bishop E2. <laughs> H6 makes sense. I'm sorry, Tazik is not here. Damn, did PayPal not update? Uh oh. Now you're really scaring me. E5. And now black has a good, sort of, reasonable Gurganiza Karo Khan. But white is sort of threatening to play c3, reinforcing his center. So you need to get your knight in the game, dude, before it's too late. Yeah. That's your best suggestion today, Arsenal. Pawn takes pawn, knight takes, knight f5, get your ass off the side of the board before it's too late. And this bishop is very happy it never moved. Yeah, I agree. But, you know, white has time to play bishop e3, so... Probably white is still better. There is also a4. I'm not, like, really crazy about the fact that we played b5. It's asking a lot. But I don't want to get my knight stuck on the side of the board. This, this is a very bad move. Arsenal, why did you bring up PayPal not updating? You triggered Mr. Coffee. He said, Hello, help Sledgy to become the youngest senior world champion of all time. No, I mean, Knight G4 is, is a big mistake. I'm waiting to just play H3 and refute it. You can't do the fishing pole. Like h5, you're just like down a piece. I mean, there's no way this is going to work. I mean, you could try it. There's some cheapos, and yeah, maybe... If Wade isn't careful, he'd get his hand, head handed to him or something. You donate it through PayPal and not... Oh, not through Streamlabs. Yeah. You did 1.72, oh no. 7.2 off suit. You did 1.72. 36.8, Oh, 36.9, What did you do, your birthday? <laughs> Arsenal, donate exactly the amount to make it your birthday. All right. Yeah, h3 refused black's position. But the game was knight g4. Acerbate, seriously. Actually, you know what? Maybe Arsenal's wrong. Maybe black should play knight f5 first. Maybe this is better. Here, and then h5. I'm not sure. You know, maybe this is safer. Acerbate is this obsession with knight g4. Now I can't watch anymore after this. That's ugly. This is ugly. This fugly. Dude, that is an ugly setup you got there. It looks like one of those space invaders, like bases, you got set up. At the bottom, the base. The like fires or whatever. Look at this. What else could it be? It's a... It's a tank or something? F5. But this is good. White played knight takes e6. Yeah. Anyway, it was nice knowing him. White just lost a piece for nothing. And then Astrobate gave it back. Like, don't be up a piece. Just give him it back, of course. <clears throat> White still has a nearly winning position after h5, but 
Why would you give him a piece back? The guy went crazy, sacrificed peace for nothing, and then you give him the peace back? It is a volcano. Okay. Thanks, Chemical Chirp. So now we're threatening yield, like, Rook H1 check. It works, right? In a lot of variations. Can we try it? Rook H1 check. King takes. Check. King G1. G3. It's made, right? Unfortunately, he can escape. He doesn't have to take the rook. He can play here. Now we would play Queen H4 check. Things get a little complicated, and they're certainly not favorable for white. I don't think I've ever seen an example of Acerbate doing a rook h8 or h1 suction mate. Acerbate, this is not in your repertoire, right? Have you ever done that? The rook h8, rook h1? See, the problem is, like, he's not really big on pawn moves. So it's, like, the chance of Astrobate having a pawn on, like, so advanced a square, like, G5. You know, you pointed out an interesting thing, Arsenal fan. Like, I've never seen him make that many... Like, he's really making a lot of pawn moves. Korchnoi would appreciate that. The rook lift clearance. Acerbate's gone from Morphe to, to like, Korchnoi. Oh, he did it this way. Nice, and you did it. Nice! This is first one, man. His first suction mate. Nice job, dude. I've never seen you do that before. The cornflake kid was probably like puking up his cornflakes when he saw that move. Yeah, sweet. He doesn't have time for like bishop e3, bishop g1. But anyway, it's been it's been a good it's been a good sign. Bob hasn't been here in a while, so you can channel the sexual nature. All right, Sumahara versus Sparkle Horse. Oh no, I almost forgot. But Arsenal fan, even if you donated to the wrong place, thank you. It's the thought that counts. One point seven two. You played perfectly. It was a perfect game. Literally perfect game. All right, Sumahara versus Sparkle Horse. I hate playing the Nimzo against Sumahara. He even submitted it. I'm never going to play the Nimzo against you again because you you not only play well, but you submit it to the Thursday stream. All right, guys. Ready to, to go. The final wine cooler. And I need some water. If you're going to drink in the summer, remember to drink lots of fluids. Keep yourself hydrated. If you have to drink and drive, drink Pepsi. All right. Let's go. I remember the gobbler. You've already mentioned that. It's too hot for beer. It's so hot that, like, beer is too heavy, you know? Maybe Weiss beer, uh, wheat beer. The vice beer. Yeah, you speak German. It's cool. D4, knight of six, whatever. Okay. So now at the point where I played so many games with Sumaher that I just play like random whatever. I've played every like possible variation for black. This time I threw out C5. He plays takes, which is the best move. And again, I've tried like every move here. Looks like objectively, yeah, Castles is probably best. I wonder how many times I've played that against him. Feels like I've probably played the Castles the least. 
I've only played castles or bishop to c5. It's surprising that I've never played knight a6 here. And I've never... Oh no, I've played bishop takes c5 or castles, yeah. I never played knight a6. I lost really bad against Charlie Hurtan in that line. I've also lost with white in that variation. This variation is, I don't know where it stands theoretically, but we used to play this. I used to play this. But I kind of gave it up at some point, because like white has two good lines. Both like b4 and f3 are better for white. But I'm surprised I never at least like tried it once. That That used to be like black's main line. Um, what does theory say now? Yeah, knight e6 is the third best move. Oh, I played... Yeah, you can play knight c6. Queen c7 is a weird move order. Hmm. Looks like it has a pretty good score. Yudazin. But I have played similar lines. Maybe by transposition. Okay, in this game I took with the bishop. He always plays knight f3. White can also play bishop f4. I suppose this is fine. I have a game from 2016. No, queen c7 not, not committing to bishop takes c3. You're trying to play like a hedgehog. Um, a6, bishop takes c5, bishop b7. It's slow. So in today's game, I played bishop takes c5, or in the other day. Yeah, I mean, I honestly, like, bishop f4 is probably not a bad line. It's played a fair amount with good results. You could consider playing that. You don't want to play bishop g5, though, because the bishop takes f2 check. <laughs> this guy from Germany fell for it. That's unbelievable. He played here, I beat him. The Gafide Master. It's unbelievable that a Fide master would blunder bishop takes f2 check, but shit happens, you know, I mean, I've made some stupid moves. Um, so I played queen b6, with, with him in particular. We have a whole bunch of games with this. But I don't trust this variation, it's like, it's slow. Um... So where's theory? Queen b6 has over, overtaken other moves to be the main line. It looks like castles is the soundest. I had games with some good players. Sarkar and, and Kiryakov. I lost against Kiryakov years ago. I think he played a good game against me. He probably played bishop f4. I know Justin played, um, I guess Justin might have played bishop, bishop g5 against me, now I don't remember. I had one of each. Sometimes people will do stuff like a3, but that's kind of lame, you know, I, I don't think that's dangerous. Maybe culture, camel culture actually played a, a c2 C nimzo against me, I don't remember. But I think you gotta play either bishop f4 or, or bishop g5. Yeah, Justin was contacting me like six months ago or a year ago because his like most brilliant game of all time was against me. One of his most brilliant wins. 
it was a funny thing, man. He was a kid. He was like, um, oh, Astro Bait, 1167. Everything else second to Senior Conquest. When Justin Sarkar was, when he was like around, I don't know, 14, I, he was 2100, and, and I had no idea who he was, and he was just coming up. And I got paired with him in the first round of the National Chess Congress. And I have no idea who he is, other than he's a 14-year-old kid, rated 2100. I was like a master. This was like in 1994. Let's say I was 2350, 2400. And um, I'm paired down, and I played the Skaven Ingen. But the funny part was, like, I didn't know he was autistic. So... We, like, went to the board, and, and like, I tried to ask him if he had a, a clock, and he, like, didn't answer. I was like, hello? Do you have a clock? Um, I have, like, a board and pieces, but do you have a clock? Because I don't have a clock. And he just, like, stared at me and didn't answer. So, like, slowly I figured out something wasn't right. <laughs> but anyway, like, the gist was, like, I had to go and, like, buy a clock, because I didn't have a clock. And, and anyway, I bought a clock, and we played, and he played a double bishop sacrifice against my king's side, where he ended up sacking both his bishops for two pawns, and didn't checkmate me, but my king escaped, but I had to, like, give up my queen, and we ended up in this insane middle game, the only one I ever played in my life, where my, my opponent had two queens... Yeah, like Lasker, except I escape, right? I end up with a queen, like with two bishops and a pawn for a queen or something like crazy. The game went like 80 moves, and he had a hard time like beating me with two queens against like queen and two bishops or something. It was ridiculous. Um, anyways, like the game is somewhere in like my, my files, and I'd have no idea, and he was like trying to get me to to like give him a copy James Webb images that looks like that game yeah it's cool all right time to move on bishop f4 bishop b7 e3 castles like fortunately I I crushed him the next game to even the score and then we have some draws since then he's okay He's a weird player. He's a weird person. He's got, obviously, autism, but he seems like a nice guy. So we still, we're out of book. Where did we leave book here? Rook D1. No, it's sort of surprising how um, there's no, like, high-level games here. It's kind of weird, like, there's no high-level games at all in this line. Knight C6 is an old variation um, that I never really thought was good enough. Maybe objectively, castles is better. But I thought, like, the whole game made sense. Now you played e3. Because obviously, if you play e4, like, this is really close to my game with. It's close to my game with Kiryakov. e4, knight g4, Asturbate, bishop g3. Or knight d1. There are problems on the dark squares. But not necessarily the f2 in particular. So most people don't go for e4. He plays e3. A castle. He plays bishop e2. This is more aggressive. 
support Miles 1983. Bishop e2. I was happy to see that. That looks kind of passive. And now I played a6, but it's probably too slow. It's just probably too slow. The problem is like when you play when you play knight c6 you're not playing a hedgehog anymore. Kamsky. Oh, I was trying to remember Ferintosh earlier. Ferintosh was the one who stole he was the one who stole uh Totbela's analysis in the Petrov. Um Well, I don't know if it was him or his co-author, but somebody A6 so we're following Rodrigo Vasquez versus Jose, my friend, Gonzalez, Garcia. They had a game in 03. Jose lives in Barcelona, I think. <laughs> Rodriguez is, Rodrigo Vasquez is a Chilean grandmaster. So we follow the game exactly, but it seems like white is better. You follow the game exactly. And here Jose played knight c6. But I just don't... I don't see what our plan is. Guys, we have a couple more games to go. Arsenal and Camel Culture. But I feel like my setup is just a tempo shy. I ended up playing d6 here. The bottom line is like White got a superior position. Computer comes up with knight h5. I considered it, but I felt like I was already like really far behind in development. This completely makes sense. This just leaves my knight baking out on the side of the board there. So, I think that's the best refutation. I agree with the computer. Just calmly sit on the d6 square when my knight is out in Zimbabwe. So we tried d6, and then he just like became a monster. If Wade makes a routine move here, black's fine. You know, like one routine move and black's fine. But Sumaher, the, the deadly 1900. Like, you won't play a lame move like A3. I'm completely out of the woods if you do that. All I need is one tempo to play queen c7 and set up a hedgehog. Just give me one tempo. Get out of this great move, man. E4. Anyway, E4. So we ended up... We ended up with very similar position that I had with, with Kiryakov years ago, except, you know, in that game, somehow, I ended up putting, like, a knight on e5 and getting double pawns, and this queenside majority beat me. Here, um, K 
can we play a different move maybe? Like knight e8? What if I preemptively defend? You play e5. And then I go queen. No, I, I go queen c7. That's my only move. This doesn't improve my position. He has... Maybe 94. That's complicated, though. Is this better than what I did? Apparently, like, it's awful. So he has takes. Bishop takes and knight g5. Whoops. That's not good. Alright, this is worse. I'm unimproving. Okay, so I did the most natural thing. I, I, played, I played queen c7. He plays e5. Bang. And white's better. You know, now I was smart not to do that because it's tempting, and then we transpose to that crushing variation. So I have to take. And now the problem is, if he takes to the bishop, he has this problem with the long diagonal, right? I mean, I could play queen c6 or something, and I'm fine. Like, in particular, like, this variation is particularly good. So he's like, Mr. Smart, he doesn't take with a bishop, he takes with a knight. And now he's starting, well, he's starting discoveries, knight g6 in particular. So I thought, oh shit, you know, I'm like, I'm lost. And then I was like, wait a minute, no, maybe I'm not lost. Bishop d6 is a suicidal move, right? Then you're just gonna get ripped apart by rook takes. This has to be good, no? I mean, I was looking at stuff like this, and then I had fantasies of losing my queen. Knight, knight, C, knight e7 check. Where do I go? I mean, but it's probably not that clear, actually. Could I play this move? There must be a tactic that I'm missing. I just assumed it was like lights out, rook takes d6. Oh no, it is. It's not. Wow. But I didn't calculate this. I should have calculated more. Rook takes, queen takes, knight g6. Okay, the problem was queen c6. Yeah, that loses obviously. I was looking at this though. Damn. This is crazy. I mean, he sacked in exchange. That's crazy. I guess it's not the best square. Okay, let's say c5. He is taking my rook though. He can just take my rook. I would probably have to play it like this. And White just has like raging dark square bishop with a very good position. So anyway. Wow, I have some move that's impossible to find, rook d8. Like no one in their right mind plays that move. I don't think I would find rook d8 in a two hour time control, honestly. I am not leaving my queen in this in this diagonal. So I played this. I feel like I remember analyzing this now, Sumahair, that you missed something even better than what you did. Asterby, thanks for supporting the stream, buddy. Thanks for everyone that tuned in. Thanks for supporting my efforts to become the youngest ever world senior champion. 
Don't forget to chip in. For only $10 a week, you can help me become the youngest world senior ever. The computer said something that, that you missed. I think it was Queen B3. It's a subtle move, like a very quiet move. It actually looks slow. I would have just played Knight on BD7. I'm, I'm pretty sure this was it. But I have the possibility of Bishop D8. I'm not sure if I would have even thought of that. Yeah, I would play Knight on BD7, and I don't know. Apparently, like, it's an improvement on the game. He has, like, a slightly better version of the game. Knight a4 and like I can't take here because of knight takes b6 so I'm like paralyzed literally paralyzed with advantage to white but he played the more obvious knight a4 I played this and now you know I thought okay I'm okay still he should play queen b3, transposing. Tough move to find. So he plays bishop f1. This guards g2. And after thinking for a while, I was like, oh my god, everything's fine. You know, I'm totally fine. I'm completely out of the woods here. But I should have thought a little longer. I mean, what, what about... What about this? Can I play knight c5, knight takes b6, queen c5? There's like really strange possibilities, but I don't know. Queen c7? What? I'm just winning two pieces? I have this. Oh shit. That's sick. Oh, that's so sick, man. White's just completely strafed on the long diagonals with with this. Yeah, that was the best line for him, queen b3. I should have been looking for, like, attacking moves. Asturbate would have found it. Morales would have found it. So I played b5, I thought everything's fine. And then he plays knight takes d7, and then knight d7, and then rook takes d7. And now I decided, like, I was busted, because he just won the exchange. It took me, like, three minutes or four minutes to realize white was sacrificing the exchange to win back the exchange. So the only thing that matters here is the fact that he has a queenside majority. Really, the only thing in the position is like white's queenside majority, which should have won the game. But I, I made another mistake. I should have played this. At the time, I thought I was losing. And it wasn't until like after queen d4 that I realized that I wasn't down material. Sadly. So now. Now, only now, I realized I was down material, and it was just, like, lucky that I had a way of, like, indirectly defending this b5 pawn. I think the computer said even, like, queen e5 was better, guarding laterally. I ended up giving him h3 with tempo. So I mean I could have had McQueen in e5 just defending this and stopping the invasion with Queen c7. This is the move that totally messed me up. It's unbelievable. I'm like basically close to lost here. Everybody has nice bishops. I I blundered like couldn't find a move. I thought forever. 
spend a minute here. Queen B4 is horrible. There was a crazy move or something, something weird. It's amazingly difficult. I mean, he's threatening um, to just take my bishop. And I don't have a good place to, like, put it. Because there's also bishop c5. Right. Like, if you play bishop f6, what happens on bishop c5? Like, what am I going to do? It's really um, unbelievable. I'm just, like, completely lost. That was why it was important not to play queen d4. But if I hadn't known I didn't have a lost position, I never would have played that, you know? I, I thought I was losing the exchange. But even after, like, boom, boom. If I had just gone here, I would have controlled the c7 square. So after this, 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 and this, so long as he doesn't have this invasion to, like, c7, black's probably hanging on. But I misplaced my pieces, and then I ended up playing this ridiculous queen before. What do you want to do? Bishop f6, bishop c5, rook d8. Yeah, I must have looked at this. Yeah, this is some surviving here. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna drop a pawn eventually. Like takes takes queen here. I feel like I'm gonna drop the pawn eventually. Actually, no. I have rook f8 here. You're right. You're right. Like that's not that clear. Maybe there was another move. Damn. Here, rook d8. I, I probably fought a long time on this move. And I really blundered. Why would I reject bishop f6 if it's not this? I don't know, it looks like I'm hanging on. I, I guess it was this, I, I don't know. You know, I just like didn't have a handle on reality or something. Wait, what am I playing here again? It must have been this. Oh, I said rook f8. I missed rook f8. I must have looked at lines like that, where I'm just, like, losing. Because the bishop takes b5. I'm not even sure that's losing. Wouldn't it be sick if I have this move? That's an awesome move, no? Hello? How are you doing today? This is your bishop on g2. Check. Check. Here. Check again. This this is perpetual check. Do I have the checky? 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 Here? Checky? Then here? Checky. And if here? Checky? Here? Checky. Checky, checky. Always checky. It's perpetual. That's sweet. Wow. No, he never gets to interpose his bishop. This is a draw. This is a draw. Wow, the engine busts bishop d7. Oh my god. Or bishop e8. It's still a draw, though. That's an epic position. Hmm. This is a draw.
Bishop D7. Too deep for me, man. Now you have to play Rook F8. <laughs> Would you find that? King takes G2, Queen G4 check. King F1, Queen C4 check. Come out and play. That's a risky run when you played the classical Nimzo and your development is lagging and you never moved your queen rook. It's a good thing about the Nimzo is like you're castling on move four usually. Castling on move four generally guarantees a safer king. Wow. Dude, you're on it, man. I blundered. Bishop F6 saves the game. Jesus. I must have thought for like a minute and a half and I, I couldn't find it. No doubt I considered it, but I was I was terrified I was lost here. Wow. The real problem was like I saw this, I saw this, I saw this, I saw this, and I I saw this, but I thought I was done. I can't take on B2. I didn't see bishop takes g2. That's kind of a sweet move. Somewhat changing the evaluation. Um, but instead I played this, this is super awkward. And then here. I expected him to play a3 actually. No, 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 then I have queen takes b2. Okay, so he, he has to defend b2. And now it's just like bugging out. Can I hold this? Why did I play such a stupid move here? I played bishop d6. What if I play a sensible move? Like bishop d5. I'm still losing because of a3. I'm still gonna lose. I'm still gonna lose. I'm gonna lose this pawn. Maybe not. I have queen d6. No, it's gonna lose. I don't have a move. I'm lost. Yeah, I'm just gonna lose the pawn. I have to be losing here. No? No, it's not losing. Man, I'm actually hanging on by a thread. Wow. I was still hanging on by a thread. Jeez. So it took a number of blunders for me to lose. Bishop d6, this was a big blunder. Hey, I just forced him to attack my pawn again. That's a good idea. Because already, like, one piece attacking b5 wasn't enough. I want to, like, force him to have two attacking it. Bishop e5, here. Now he's, like, fully mobilized. And at this point, I, I was like, oh my god. I'm starting to fall behind on the time. There's bishop c5 winning. Material? Or no? Actually... That's crazy, he doesn't have that. Or does he? He probably does. Bishop c5, queen f4. So he's actually not threatening that. He's threatening my b5 pawn. It was a difficult position to save, but I have to find a move here. I mean, h6. Can I play h6? I'm just dropping b5, no. I think I'm finally, like, lost at this point. I'm just losing the b5 pawn. Of course, I'm hoping he plays g3, but no. He doesn't want to drop me. g3 is very good for white. Sumer knows about that. Plays that. And now I have no counterplay. Now I'm just, like, resigning. <coughs> this is resigning. You might as well just resign. There's no counterplay. Everything is defended except for the a2 pawn. I have no threats. My rook is undeveloped. I have back rank weakness. 
boom, great. Trade queens into a lost ending. Take, take, take. And now the last hope. My only hope was to like immobilize his connected past pawns. So I keep immobilizing his connected past pawns any way I can. I should be lost. Wait has to be careful. But watch what happens. Bishop here. Immobilize, immobilize, immobilize. And then rook c8. Hey, it's an easy win for what? White, right? No. It looks like an easy win for white. He's up two connected pass pawns on one side of the board. But it's unbelievable. Here, here, kabling. And I have to be honest, like I thought I was still lost, but I checked it with the engine and I'm not, apparently. It's unbelievable. I was able to save this position. Classic Slaggy. No, that's the most satisfying. Like you said, like you said the other day, Arsenal. I'm an expert in like holding bad positions. I have huge saves. Last year, for my team to win the the Hungarian second division, there was like one in particular game if I lost we wouldn't have made it and another one I mean I don't want to like take credit because everyone deserves credit because we literally qualified for the first division by by half a point in 50 games or you know whatever everyone but um yeah that's my greatest strength and we don't get to see it a lot here on the stream but I save lost positions I'm hard to kill David Vigorito described me like that. Very, very hard to kill. I was undefeated. We think we see it pretty often. Bishop B1. And I thought I was lost, though. I miscalculated this. I guess, like you said, it's fun to save lost positions. I've always been highly motivated. It's just as fun as winning, honestly. Boom. And now he played a weird move. Bishop a6. I'll be honest, like, I thought I was lost if he plays b5. Because I calculated this. In my mind, I have to play bishop d6, bishop b8, and blockade. But maybe it's not winning for white. White is at no risk of losing, but how does he actually win? I was afraid, like, it's hard to get my king over. He can block it. Computer is pretty confident it's a draw you can take this to the bank but at first I didn't even see that I thought I was lost for sure actually the engine likes his move I could have played bishop d5 but I thought, like, the idea was when he plays b5, I pin him with bishop c4. As long as my king's in the vicinity, I think it's a draw. And then Sumahara actually tried to lose. He tried to trap my bishop, first of all. He's starting to, like, trap my bishop. And then he tries to lose by sacrificing a pawn. No, I actually, if I could only, like, manage to have two connected past pawns somehow. But I had to take.
I was never winning. But I had symbolic advantage of being up a pawn. When you analyze this game, you know, with the engine, it comes out with a really good CPL for both sides, so. This is one of the best games recently. He was winning, you know, before he traded rooks on c8. That was that was the key position. Anyway, good game, Sumahara. We have two last games: Schieberspieler versus Arsenal fan. Okay, this is a simul game. Schieberspieler versus Arsenal fan, simul game. I think Chigorin is a good choice against Ars against Arsenal. Against Arsenal. No, against Schieberspieler. You've got to play tactically. Schieberspieler is very good in clean positions, but he's not as strong in sharp, crazy positions. So you want to play something, you know, unclear, not, you know, you want him to get his hands dirty. I mean, I'll be honest, like I think the best line for white against the against the Chigorin is like D four, D five, C four, knight C six, knight C three. Like this is definitely White's best line. The problem is when White plays knight F three, he's committed now. He can't play the best line against Chigorin. So honestly, like on knight C six, I mean I normally I normally play um I'm playing g3. So, this is my thing, you know. I like this better. If I'm forced into this position, I'll play, I'll play it like a reverse um, Grunfeld. I think this is better than c4, but that's just my personal opinion. You know, maybe this... I doubt... He's going to play a bad line, though. There's a famous game. Pillsbury. One with black. This is just... Um, I don't remember who was white. But there was a fantastic Pillsbury game with black in this. So CD's not really dangerous. This is the best move. And then, um, you can take. This is a question I don't know. You know, it looks like you should take, probably. We're basically playing like a Trompowski reversed. Aliakin played pawn takes e6, queen a4, but I think that's, that's like, it's like stupid. I played this in the simul once with white got nothing against somebody. Arsenal, didn't Bronstein play the Chigorin? I'm pretty sure, sometimes. I mean, he played a lot of interesting openings. Um... But I, I think, like, you know, already... There's also E... I mean, G takes F. Maybe that's better. But this is, like, literally a reverse Trumpowski. I still feel like black's okay. Maybe this is important, theoretically, though. You should probably be prepared here. Wow, it's giving white a huge edge. Typical computer. I don't know. I would look at it. Maybe bishop takes f3 isn't best. Maybe your move's better. No, e6 makes sense. It is very likely that e6 is, is best. So now Schieber Spieler plays cd. Like, how many options does he have here? I've played this position with white. Rarely. I don't really like it, you know? 
What does black do against queen b3? Queen b3 in what position? In that position, that last one? After like bishop takes? Oh, queen b3 here? Not this position. Which position with queen b3 are we talking about? Knight c3. Oh, like take. E takes, e6. Takes, takes, queen b3. What are we talking about? This? Jonathan Levitt versus Danny. Doesn't look right to me. Can't you just play bishop b4? I would say bishop b4. Fuck him, you know. Give him two bishops for, for two knights. What would Chigorin do? I mean, this has to be playable, right? That's the entire, like, concept of the Chigorin. Willing to play, like, for outpost squares, for knights. It's fully playable for black. Maybe white's better. Damn. Queen e7 check, apparently. These are all correspondence games, so no one even knows this position. Yeah, I mean, you gotta get the, the correspondence database fired up if you're gonna play the Chigorin. There's a lot of hidden gems, probably, like people don't even know. It's just not a very well explored opening. That's the advantage of playing something that, that people just don't know really well. You just finished interviewing in a 7.5 hour time slot. You're in the wrong place, dude. Obviously you can play bishop takes f3. But your opponent... The Schieber Spieler played bishop f4. Yeah, I feel like... Against this particular opponent, you want unclear. But that is the main move, it appears, theoretically. I still think like you can you can give up both bishops. Probably. If white's like plus one according to the engine, we can live with that. The golden rule is like it's better it's o it's okay to have two knights versus two bishops, but you generally would rather have two knights against two bishops than, than bishop and knight. So if we're gonna go for it we, we, we don't mind like giving up both bishops for both knights. You know, you'd rather give up both bishops for both knights than... And just play with knights versus bishops in a closed structure. We have outpost squares. The knights coordinate with each other much more easily than, than the bishop and knight do. You play the whole game based around, like, outpost squares, closed structure. Yeah, Move11 asked me to do a Chigorin um, video series for chess lecture. It's probably a good idea. I don't have a single book on Chigorin, sadly. I mean, I think when you play bishop b4 in this type of position, you're, you're going to trade it off. But, I mean, you could always do this. Anatoly Karpov, Yaron, Piquet, 2000, draw. Oof. I mean, if Karpov can't win with white against Jigorin, the shit must be good. G takes F. I'd say bishop e4. But, looks like Picat played something else. I guess your move. It's still okay, you're trading off his bishop pair in this case. 
Either you trade off his bishop pair, or you got two knights against against two bishops. You make sure you get a good a good combination. Here you're trading off his bishop pair. All right, knight f6. Yeah. So this is more normal, I think, in this structure. Sometimes you might play knight f5. You also have to watch that he doesn't do like a pin or something with bishop h4. There's one player who did this. I mean, it's like a normal French setup you're playing here, right? That feels more natural. Play like the olive farmer. So you play knight f6. Yeah, not a lot of high rank players played this move. It all, it almost feels like a different opening, like the Rigozin or something now with the knight on f6. It literally feels like you're playing the Rigozin, except your bishop's on d6 and not on b4. Maybe that's the problem, but I still think it's playable. The e5 square. Again, you have to be on the lookout for bishop h4, though. Yeah, anything that controls e5, rook e8. Basically, you've got you've got a Karo Khan exchange variation with your knight on c3. Shiver's Spiller is in heaven here. He loves simplified structures. But at this point, I think you should take on g3 arse. Like, why not? I don't have a problem with it. Um, you want to get your knight off of... You probably want to get your knight off here. Could you play knight e7? What? Is it what? I mean, I'm not even sure if we want him to take on d6 because, like, he might hit us with knight b5 or something. I think once he castles, I'm okay with exchanging on g3. You just don't want, like, some shit happening on the h file. I think you're fine. You know, you're probably equal here. In fact, you probably want to, like, chop his knight. You know, I would just take his knight. Screw the knight. He'll probably take the g-pawn, though. Maybe that's a problem. You know, actually, that's interesting. Maybe you should do the move order so you take first on f3 with the bishop. Force him to take with the bishop. I don't think even Schieberspieler would do that. Try to get him to take with the bishop first, then take here. You know, and then you're, like, really solid. I guess he's still a tiny bit better. It's not the most ambitious way to play. All right, knight e4. Well, you actually transpose to a game. You're just a tiny bit worse. He's playing a simul. I mean, his best shot is the minority attack here. So now, um... Yeah, it's too late for knight e7. You could play knight takes c3 and knight e7. You could play this. He might take with the pawn and like change tack though, but I think that's okay. You're absolutely fine here. It's like a Petrov or something. I just go for, for like outpost. Um, he'll probably take with the rook and then you play knight e7. Or maybe you take first and play ninety seven. You just don't want to get tied down, you know. This is the the danger. I remember when I was a sixteen hundred, I had a game in a in a quadrangular tournament where I beat this guy because he got tied down to his. It still sticks in my mind. Thirty five years later, when I was sixty, a game from when I was sixteen hundred, like he got tied down to the C pawn.
Tomato farmer, are you serious? You are you are joking, right? All right. I think he's joking. A6 though, you know, not a move we really want to play. You're mobilizing the majority. You don't want to mobilize your majority against the minority. That's not that's frowned upon by society. Arsenal. This is A6 is literally it's literally like discrimination um, but you gotta realize when you touch the pawns on that side of the board you're weakening yourself on his strong side theoretically this is your side let's draw an arrow down the board like this is your side over here that's the arsenal side and this is the the Sheber Spieler side your strong side is this side his strong side is this side so you don't want to touch anything on that side, you know what I mean? You want to play f5, f4. There's your minority attack, f5, f4. Unfortunately, you moved your rook away. I'd rather have the other rook over there. a6 is not a move you want to play. It has ramifications. And now you played a really weird move, knight f6. You're lucky you've got away with that. This is strange. <clears throat> I mean, you're you're like losing time, if nothing else. But I agree, it's like not obvious what you should do. I think you should seriously consider. First of all, if you move like ninety seven, it looks good. Not right away though. Damn, you're right. Okay, you probably have to preface that. Ninety seven, ninety four. Maybe we just trade. I mean, how bad is it? Like, takes, rook takes, 97. What's he going to do to you? Queen b3, rook b8. You just rook c1, c6, and you're a rock. It's a rock. You try for the minor attack here. You know, it's like a tiny advantage for white. You never probably should have put your knight on f6. So you did something like radically anti-positional now. This must have made cheaper spiel to like malfunction. This is sick. That's a really ugly move. It's possible it works. I mean, this is kind of thing you see in the Queen's Gambit decline, like normal Queen's Gambit declined, where, you know, you can transfer a guy into C4 and blockade it and block him up on the C line. But not, like, not a move you necessarily, like, want to play. Anatoly Karpov would, like, kick your ass here. But you need, you know, in order for White to win, he has to be literally a member of the Russian Duma. Queen c2, 97, 95, and that's kind of like, what else? Wow. This is high level. Arsenal doesn't trade bishops, but plays bishop f5 instead. Low on time. You're not going to avoid the exchange of bishops. He's going to play bishop d3. Who are you fooling, man? And now he has knight c5. So now you played that. Yeah, like if you're playing a member of the Russian Duma or like Portish or I don't know, Sultan Ribley and not Sheber Spieler in a simul, you're gonna get tortured. But with good chances of getting a draw. But here. He just offered you a draw. Yeah, it's a tough position for White to win, but White's better. Half pawn, 0.4. Wow. The engine started to exaggerate. It's exaggerating. White's better, you know, but one pawn. 
That's a little excessive. All right, guys, last game for today. Camel Culture versus Leon. I've heard from my sources this is a very high-level game. This is like a stylistic mismatch. Camel is very strategic, but Leon seems like a crazy bullet player. So we did, what is this? The Adiban attack? Thanks Astrobate for being our, our major donor today. Arsenal, our minor donor. But I mean, you know, stylistically, Camel Culture wants to own this guy strategically. He's a maniac who plays like so fast. You're looking for a strategic game. D5 is actually probably not a bad move. I would consider queen takes d5. Unlike other positions, you don't have e4 here. That's a very important resource. Queen a4 check, queen takes. In other style positions, like e4 would be would be viable. So you, you don't... Don't even have an option. It's hard to believe like black is better after three moves, but you're not better. You need to just like own the long diagonal. Do you're so you're such a noob to play Queen C two here. I don't see that as a good idea. I think dude just play Bishop B two. You got this. I mean, this is your Trump. Sorry to say Trump. There's an Adiban game already in the list. Yeah, we got to try to do something based on, you know, just keeping him tied up. He can't. It's hard for black to coordinate this shit. You know, um, Foigl, who is a strong Ukrainian GM strength player, who is a friend of mine, he used to play this kind of setup you're playing with black against the English, which is basically the same thing, except he was like a tempo down. Fugle did pretty well with it. I mean, oftentimes like people will play f6, and, and it's hard to deal with that diagonal. Look at the white score here. It's quite good. So at the end of the day, I think the truth is like maybe he even should take with the queen. I mean, what I'm trying to get to is this. Klaus Bischoff versus some random noob. The point is like black probably might as well just take with the queen anyway. Okay, so Camel Culture decides to play queen c2. In addition to b3, this is like super slow. And now black just goes off the rails I mean, I don't know. I would be kind of torn between, like, just gambiting a pawn with knight takes d5 or queen takes d5. <laughs> but your opponent defends the c5 pawn with knight mbd7. That's so messed up. That's really funny. That's sick, dude. That's a really sick move. There's no way I'm playing knight mbd7 for black. Either of these moves is okay. Either way, like this is totally good luck with that. Yeah, have fun. You're you're gonna get your ass kicked developmentally if you take that pawn. I wouldn't take that pawn. That looks very dangerous. But he plays that. That's so sick. That's horrible. Suddenly, like white is just like better. I want to say like black is lost. 
it's not just like better I think like he's literally like lost after e4 it's a lost position for black five moves this is this is literally like game over because you can't you can't break without like destroying your whole structure you have no counterplay against the monster center he's he's game over man b5 you can't play b5 you can't play e6 he does g6 yeah knight on bd7 is like double question mark blunder and go from like fine to worse or lost so he decides okay i'll play g6 probably best move here bishop g7 now he's just like clear pawn down with massive center for the opponent what happens is probably camel culture gets carried away yeah but what, what you don't realize here camel culture or maybe you did realize but underestimated your opponent is how crushing your position advantage like really is like black is yeah i guess he has like one chance maybe he could castle and try to play an e6 break with the rook like what's he gonna do castle let's say let's set him castle like if you play knight f3 he castles you make a normal move whatever and then this i would suppose like his only chance would be to like plus somehow play e6 without his pawn structure getting like trashed that's like theoretically the only way i could see it's like okay for black but camel culture played e5 yeah that's just not good yeah david vigorito claimed that when i was younger he he said that i would like choose unclear over like slight advantage to me this is like doing that like <laughs> Yeah, you're totally letting him back in the game. Now it's... I'm not sure what's happening. I mean, I guess you just assumed, like, this wins by force. You made a miscalculation. Actually, it's pretty concrete. Sometimes we just play on impulse, especially Arsenal fan. I don't know if I would just take on f7 or play bishop e5 check. Your bishop could be a liability. That's the only thing that bothers me about this move. If you think about it, either way, his king is getting, you know, he's losing his right to castle. But but honestly, like, what good can come of your bishop being on b5 other than, like, it gets hit by something? You're not respecting your bishop. This bishop is a bad move. This is a this is a vulnerability. Okay, you developed. Is it worth it? Maybe. I'm just like thinking out loud. I mean, it's unprotected. None says like LPDO. You never put pieces on squares where they're unprotected. But I mean, I don't know. This is kind of annoying. You're. I I mean, just take. King takes. You're, you're like slightly behind the development, but white's better. I don't know. Now you gotta take. He's all over you with bishop f5. Oh my god. I was actually gonna suggest, um,. That's an interesting point. I wonder if you had taken an f7, he wouldn't consider king f8, right? He would he would definitely take. There might be some there might be some benefit in not taking it. Objectively, in a practical sense. What I was gonna suggest was like here, like you might have to play a3 to stop knight b4. Bishop f5 is still unpleasant. It's unpleasant, but I guess you can deal with it, you know? Maybe this is not even that bad. He has here. He has here, check. It's a crazy situation. You might even have bishop d3 there. 
That doesn't look right. You know, honestly, you, you have to watch Knight F4, but you might even be able to play here, here, check. Yeah, and I mean, now you're like, you, you gotta really have a sense of danger at this point. At this point, I'd be like, okay, I fucked up. Now I need to be really, really careful. And there's no way I'm taking that pawn on c5. Now it's time to consolidate. But when you sit there and you think about it, you realize like, oh shit, like white doesn't really have a lot of good moves. And this... Although it looks stupid, in camel culture's defense, it does one very important thing. It stops white or black from playing knight b4. Even though it looks insane, and honestly, I think you're in deep shit. Like, probably knight f4. I would assume this is maybe fatal for white. After we see it, it doesn't stop it. Well, I mean, you can theoretically play something that at least stops it for the moment, right? Like queen a3. Is 95 way better than 95 because it stops 93? 95? No. I mean, objectively, like, White lost this game in a really surprisingly and quick way. <laughs> E6? Damn. But I would take here. And actually. This gives us some vulnerabilities. Because now in like knight f3 you have knight g5 check. So he probably has to play king f8. That's where I focus my attention. My assumption would be like you could probably like... You know this would be the question. Can you consolidate here? I don't really like knight f4. But I suppose you, you have a lot of options. You could play queen c4, for example. Fuck the pawn, you know? You don't need this pawn. People are really materialistic. If you play b5, I'm not taking any pawns. I'm like, going over here. Stop people being so material, freaking materialistic. If you take pawns, you open up, you know, potential for his pieces. At least in a practical game. You like knight f4 right immediately. But you're saying, after a3, knight f4 immediately. Oh, snap. But now my bishop's here. <coughs> That's an interesting move. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. You know, maybe you can do some... You can do some crazy-ass materialistic stuff now. Taking the pawn. I still don't trust it, though. Yeah, this looks scary for white. But probably... Probably white's okay. I mean, Black has to develop his pieces as well. You know, this is not, like, a normal position. You're talking about this, this. 
bishop d3? Yeah, I wasn't even sure if I could do that. <clears throat> yeah, I was kind of scared to even attempt this. You have like 93. <laughs> it's like that other game, man, that you were suggesting 93 in a position. It's funny. It's funny how things... Jermita Farm is like, with 95, what are we talking about? What, 95? 95? Like, you're serious about that? 95? I mean, I guess I'm taking 95. Well, I'm taking. And then are you playing, like, King F8? Or or taking it? I guess you're playing King F8. Because anything else is kind of lame. You know, I'd be willing to bet that, like, White has a ridiculous move here. Like, Knight F3 or something. Knight B4 is a threat, though. So, Tomato Farmer's suggestion is not silly. Yeah, this is pretty crazy. Wow. Black's like winning, according to the engine. Poor camel culture. It's way worse than I thought. 95 is the engine move. I didn't think it would be it would be that much better than Knight of Six. Jesus. Yeah, I didn't think it would be that bad. I didn't think the position was that bad. So he's actually right. Like, 95 was even better. It's a tough move to find. But I don't like bishop b5. This is crazy materialistic. You should get... Yeah, you should be annihilated for playing that. You should automatically, like, 0-1. He just grabbed all the pawns. White does have good control of the d4 square. <laughs> One out of four ain't bad enough. I mean, white has some control of the center. But you're getting annihilated here. The problem is, like, you're one move away from... ...completing your development. I'm not sure this is black's best move. Although it's very tempting. What if he plays like bishop d3, for example? That looks pretty disturbing. Yeah. Yeah, this, this is scary, man. I mean, I think you're toast after takes. This is game over. That's gotta be game over. It's almost like... I have no idea what's just. I guess here? We'll be getting mated? We're just losing our pieces. I mean, rook b8 at the minimum, right? We're just like losing a piece? This is terrible. Yeah, queen e3, knight g2. Everyone in the room saw it, except for you. Camel culture, how could you be so materialistic? Even after this, how could you take on a7? I mean, at some point you have to set a limit. I mean, at least here. I don't know, dude. I would probably play, like, queen d4 or something. Queen d4 loses to knight h5. Well, we all screw up, man. You screwed up. Objectively, you screwed up. Yeah, I guess it was the best move. You're lucky he took this pawn. Feels like he loses some coordination and time with the takes 2 check. You're a little bit, like, back in the game. Momentarily. 
This is in the tournament, yeah. I guess. I assume so. Oh, maybe he'll trade queens. There has to be some kind of sick win here for black. Oh, he's trying for this, like, brutal queen sack mate. That's sick. Black to move and, like, checkmate in three. That didn't work out so well. <laughs> he literally played for queen c1, like, a3, queen c1, bishop c1, rook c1, knight e1, bishop h3 check. King here, mate, mate, mate. Computer says mate. He's like trying to set up this like forced mate, but he doesn't even think about what the opponent can do. What can I do? You know, he's like forcing the mate. I mean, probably there's a winning move here for black. <clears throat> Some sort of deflection theme. There has to be a winning move for your, for black. I mean, 100%. Okay, he wanted to avoid trading queens. What other moves does he have? Check. Here. Where is the deflection? I mean, honestly, like, maybe queen a5 is a better move. Threatening queen takes b5 and then knight e2 mate. He's gonna just drop a knight though. Shit. Yeah, I mean, so this move made a lot of sense by your opponent. He defended his knight and he's threatening the setup here, but you just stopped him. Now, boom, boom, and where's the mate? Show me. Yeah, I mean, black's winning, but it's complicated. He has no easy win. And this is like... He's getting materialistic now. Black should be playing for, for some kind of weird-ass mate here now. I mean, even like Rook D8 might be a good move, no? It's not so simple anymore. And if Camel Culture like, just sacks the exchange, that's not a big deal. He doesn't mind losing an exchange. He lost an exchange, who cares? So actually, like, materially, <clears throat> we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. He has two pawns and, and an exchange. Two pawns and the sex change. As he used to say in the pre-PC era. Two pawns for the sex change. You're threatening queen takes f4. Very deep. Very deep. Oh, this double loaded. It's a double barrel shotgun. There's nothing there. Firing blanks. I want some something fancy to work here. I like this. That's a beautiful thing, man. The power of the centralized queen. I was waiting for like rook e1 now centralizing it just drops a piece uh, okay we can't just drop a piece way is totally winning now he totally coordinated but I'm not sure what the best move is Am I exaggerating? Maybe. Maybe white's not totally winning? Maybe we're exaggerating. We're excited. White's better. 
let's say. You know, yeah, your your knight is in jeopardy, so you could just play knight e6, but it's like takes, takes. Knight f4. Not inspiring. This is a weird position, it's tough. So you play knight d5, takes, what? So if he takes, you have this sick check winning his queen, wow. If he takes here, you're taking his queen. That's pretty nasty. So he has to move his queen. I guess you're threatening tactics again. He might be able to play like this. That's what I'm asking. Can queen d6 hold? Apparently there's one line, knight f6. EF6, this would be very hard to calculate. And then takes that, hitting the rook. That's the only winning line for white against queen d6. So he played the best move. Your bishop's hanging. But I mean, this looks really tempting. But he has that? Are you serious? This is cool. He would have queen takes b2. You know, I have really no idea, but I mean, he's on this. Queen c1? You mean rook c1? Your other queen. This? Oh, on queen c1. Oh, he has queen c1. Jesus. You have bishop f1 in low time. He's getting mated. It's just a mate. Okay, so I guess the question is, here... Wow, so pawn takes pawn, queen e8 check. That's pretty obvious. Does it work? Man, that's disturbing, huh? King g7? I'm disturbed. I don't know about you guys, but this position disturbs me. This is not the normal position. Sorry? Yeah. Queen takes queen, though? Well, I mean, obviously we can play that. But I'm not sure how good it is. You know, black's pretty active. Queen takes queen, rook takes queen. What's happening here? Black's actually better. Yeah, I mean, so this is a tough position. I mean, queen c2 was like black's best move. Camel culture found bishop takes f6. It's a better move. Here. And now he missed bishop f1. That's funny. It's funny that, that the, the rook is defended <laughs> here, bishop on f6. That's pretty cool. And now it's like... A mess. King f7 drops the exchange back. So he plays f5, but... Oh man. 
This pawn in S7 stays on. So you have like knight d6 and rook e8 check. And now he has to play king g7. And still a mess. Maybe you're you're in trouble, you have rook e7. Do you have rook e7 here? I guess he just blockades or what? Does this work? He has king f6. Oh. That's still not clear. Well, this is a cool position. Is rook f rook e7 a move? Seriously? You played like kind of random move here, h4. Kind of random. Gotta go to bed. All right, man. Have a good one. Rook e7. You're lost. I'm hallucinating. All right, sorry. I'm hallucinating. Me too. I thought you were like losing. Wow. So you have rook h8. Rook h8. Jesus. You hang on to the material. And amazingly, like, weight is not lost. Dude, that's crazy. But I'm pretty sure h4 is not a good move. But I understand it. You don't want to get back rank mated. Now you probably are, like, on the verge of losing. A pawn. The last hope. It was an iconic game, man. Probably white shouldn't win. It's still close, though. Wow. It's like 1.6. It's like some kind of crazy theoretical draw. One point six should be a draw. Nice move, Knight C five. Not rushing. Camel culture turns into Magnus. Yeah, I mean, Black's got to, like, sack the knight here. Oh, you're just queening. Oh, my God. That's sick. Wow, he can't. Oh, my God. That's evil. So, knight c5 is just evil. It's not just a good move. It's just pure evil. Yeah, it's surprising how careful Black has to be. Knight c7. Man, that's rude. The yeah, black has to be very, very careful now. <laughs> so what, like king e7 or something? What are you going to do? King e7? A7? Rook a2. What about b4? Man, this is unclear. Yeah, even the computer has a hard time figuring it out. But it looks like black could survive. There's b4. 
he blockaded with knight a8. Interesting. Uh, never mind. All right, it's not interesting. It's too passive. So this is basically the last chance. He has to find um, some kind of really difficult move. Was it rook d4 with the threat of this? Here. A7, rook d1 check, king g2, and now rook d8? Looks like actually Camel's winning. Man, that's crazy. Where did he cross horizon? I mean, grabbing f2 was greedy, right? He doesn't need to take the f2 pawn. No, that's actually best move. Wow. Best move. Knight c5. Best move. a6. So this is the blunder. He has to play king e7 first. And you're still better. Yeah, it's a mysterious position. I'm not even sure what's going on. Rook d4. Rook takes. Knight d7. I, I'm sure that, of course, you would find that, right? Now that is a cool position. Knight d7. Obviously. I'm going to leave you with that, guys. I mean, that's pretty crazy. Knight d7 wins for white. I love chess. Greed is best. No. Most cases, no, Astrobate. There were some exceptions here. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. It was fun. Camel Culture Funny Game. All right, everybody. We're going to be back. I'm going to do a raid, I guess. Looks like... It looks like... Um, Art Vega streaming. Let's do a raid. When in doubt, raid. Thanks, Mr. Coffee. Thanks, everybody. We'll be back tomorrow morning. Good games, guys. Thanks for supporting the... the tournament. In November. For your support, Astrobate in particular, Arsenal, Arsenal Alright. Announce messages. Thank you, Twitch. Stop being annoying. Alright, slash. The raid has been created.